turn it on. We got to be turned on all day. You guys get to listen to us rock and roll up here. Good morning, everyone. I'm hoping that they, we have some connections from Cyber World Year, but I don't think they're quite there yet. But we're, So we're going to start by doing some basic <coughs> housekeeping rules for the, for the house. Uh, my name is Bo Sager. I'm the regional MCA for Canada, and I'll tell you a little bit more about myself in a few minutes. Um, we have two bathrooms right behind me. We have a kitchen down at the end for water and uh, coffee. And the market center would appreciate if you would tidy up after yourself in that kitchen, apparently. There's a nice sign from the MCA here. So um, we are going to have a coffee break this morning. Um, when we get done, a status, I can't give you time because it depends on how much our, our dear friend here talks. And then we will have a lunch break for an hour. And we'll try and give you a little bit of a wiggle break in the afternoon and get you out of here by 4 o'clock today. Um, we got so much exciting stuff to share with you. Sometimes we get carried away, so if you need a break, just, you know, wave. Um, the exciting stuff, when light bulbs go off in your head, I really want to see you guys, like, get up and do a happy dance, because I love the happy dances. We had lots of happy dances yesterday, so I'm, I was very excited about the energy in the room because people got super excited about we, what we were showing them. Uh, what else do I have to tell them housekeeping-wise? We're excited about the teams being here. We want you to talk to each other. We want you to actually work together. If we need your attention back up front, one, two, three, shh, is what we're going to do in the keeping of Mo Anderson's ways. And um, we want you to ask questions as you go along. So please, there is no dumb questions. We, we're going to run around the room and help you and show you what you need to know. Um, the internet was good yesterday. Um, it sometimes is a little slow. It should be better today. Um, but just bear with it if it takes a few minutes. We got lots of updates yesterday on the command. There's lots of new stuff on there that Jill spent half his night last night looking at because he was so excited about it. Yeah, so we might have to poke him every now and then to keep him awake. <laughs> okay, so um, this morning I am going to uh, have people texting me all day, so my phone is going to be on and on the internet. But if we would really appreciate it if your phones were not connected to the internet and off, and off or yeah, okay, dad, um, <laughs> uh, and that way, Jill, your mic is your, your mic's not uh, on. It's on. Um. I'm a that tech way, guy. Everybody else will have bandwidth guy. for their computers. So if you guys could keep your your just on cell, that would be great for us. Okay, so it says we've got you here in Halifax. Get ready to roll, but it's hard to hear Jill. So Jill, you need to. Oh, I haven't said a okay. word yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today this is the bow show. You guys should yeah, be yeah, afraid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, so I am the regional MCA for Canada. I've been with the company 20 years. 20 year. years, can you imagine? Uh, we signed the agreement with uh, Gary Keller in 1999 to have the rights to the Canadian re region at the Disneyland Hotel, of all places to start our, our life. Um, and they said, here, you can have this, but we have no idea how to make it work in Canada. So that the rest is all on you. So that became my full-time position from that time on. They uh, brought me in and said, here, help us out. And here I am, 20 years later, still helping out. But I'm so excited about this technology. I tell you, Gary is so in our corner this time around. He just he jumped back in with both feet, and he wants us to work at the highest yeah. level for all of us as well. Because they've Bo, been making us promises forever. And now we've got it. We've got it. We've got it. we got it. How many times? And I do a lot of that today. So hang in there with me, because I have a lot of energy. Good morning. How are you today? If I was any better, I'd be you. Oh, all right. <laughs> Welcome to our class. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you can stay. Uh, wow, that was great. <laughs> uh, okay, and... and but, 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 Bo, I had a question for you. Yes. How many times in those 20 years did Austin said, okay, it's work, it's, we have new tech and it's going to work in Canada? Well, 
Mm, I don't know how many because I can't count that high on two hands. Uh, but I mean, we had some where they were like, it, "We're sure this is going to work for you guys," and then we were all super excited, and it blew up in our faces because stuff just didn't work. Um, and they just didn't understand. They understood we were a different region, but they didn't understand the rules and regulations of our company and the the different um, real estate councils that we have across. Rico's super strict, and the real estate council of Alberta is really strict. And, and so, it, it, if we can always be um, compliant with those two, pretty much we're compliant with everybody else. Um, and then there's Winnipeg in the middle that still are are in teepees and riding in horses and buggies. But their yeah. their real estate council is going to eventually catch up with the rest of us. But they're really behind in their in their tech and their rules and their laws. So. Um, anyway, I, I am very blessed, I tell you, at the highest level to be working with this man. He has taught me so much since I've been working with him. Um, and he, are you going to give me money? <laughs> <laughs> he is, Isn't uh, that how it works? <laughs> uh, we're so lucky to have him. He has our backs all the time and he just makes everything that we touch in, in our tech world better. So I'm going to give the floor to him, and he's going to start us off. But him and I are going to kind of tag team each other today. But if you have a question, put your hand up, and, and I'll run around the room and help you out. Um, out there in cyber world, uh, you guys have my phone number to text questions. My phone number is 360-840-0398. We will entertain Can and do our that best. Now, please? I couldn't remember. Uh huh. Uh, and if you could put your name in the text, because I got a lot of text messages yesterday that I didn't even know who they were from. I couldn't give you credit. So if you can <laughs> let me know, this is Jeremy, this is Sally, and then um, ask your question, and we'll we'll answer them as we go along. Um, we're gonna put us in the bottom corner of the screen, and we're gonna have the big screen up most of the day, and we'll be pointing and going over things. Um, if you don't catch, if you're a little bit behind us or you didn't hear what we say, um, please just send us a message and we'll go through and we'll clarify it again a second time. So, welcome everyone to our room. We have a full house again and I'm going to let m my darling friend uh, Jill here thanks. take the floor. Thank you, Bo. Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone overseas, almost overseas. Yeah, well, it's going to be an exciting day. You don't know yet. But by 4 o'clock this afternoon, I'm going to say, Jill, stop. That's enough. We had enough for our store today. We have enough work. We have to get back in the, in the office and start doing that. Nah, and, they're going to say, can we keep him? And it That's is, what they're going to say. Can we keep him? Yeah. <laughs> and it is true. I didn't sleep well last night. I don't know why. It's, it has nothing to do with Fredericton, guys. It has, nothing, it has to do with me. So I'm going to need you, your smiles, and, and your engagement today to help me carry through the day. All right? Is that a deal? All right. Deal. I, I want more than this. I want, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, it, I'm blessed to have Bo because Bo is, uh, you know, her energy, her wisdom, her experience with Keller Williams. She knows everybody and she has a loud voice. I love it. <laughs> Compared to mine, I mean, she, wow. She Normally rocks. we're not mic'd up. So, uh, and I have to repeat a, a bunch of what he says because as the day goes on, he gets a little yeah. quieter and a little quieter. Yeah. You know why? No. I want them in the back to listen. Uh, you want them to all lean in? That's a John yeah. Maxwell trick. Right. So it's going to be a lot of hands-on today because that's what we want you to do. Hands-on session. Get your contacts in there. Get to, get to learn and to use command. All right? So that, that's critical. Today is for teams. I hope you guys are all team members or rainmakers. Are you? Any solo agents in the room here? Good. You're at the right place. So it's going to be about... I'd say 85%, 90% the same as yesterday, except that we're going to cover all the team features, the team required and required configuration in command. So team for command, uh, command for teams, it works. All right? And if you have any questions throughout the day, raise your hand. If something doesn't work on your computer, raise your hand. We're going to get to you. We want this to work. All right? And throughout the day, if we have a bug or two, come on, guys. It's technology. Bugs are there to be fixed. They're not that to persist. So we, we see a bug, identify it, report it, they fix it, we carry on. We move on, right? So it's about, it, that, that's about life. So I already know a bug that we have in here. But that bug doesn't apply to Halifax. It doesn't apply to 
uh, Newfoundland, it applies only to New Brunswick for some reason. So it was selective, right? All right, so as Kerry Keller says, those are quotes from him, uh, Netflix is not, did not kill Blockbuster. Like Uber is not killing the taxi industry. It's disrupting, but it's disrupting for a good reason. Technology by itself is not a disruptor, right? Not being cons customer centric is the biggest threat. So if you, if you build technology not to be uh, around the customer, you're going to be out of the game. Because who's, the, who's the, end, the client? The client is the customer, right? So you have to build technology that evolves around that, that customer. So when you look at the Zillow of this world, it's like robots. So what we need to do is build technology for you so that you can remain at the middle, at the center of a transaction all the time. So that's why we build command. Can you put the zoom on the TV, please? Okay, good, thank you. All right, so Bo yes. and me, you see we're at the bottom of the screen? You're at the top. Today it's all about you. It's not about me, I know command. But I'm not an agent. If I was, we would be competing at a high level, believe me because I would know how to use this. So all along today, I'm gonna to give you some business tips as well. How you can use command to grow your business and to leverage it, all right? Um, one objective today. Can someone read the word there on the screen? What's the objective today? Adoption. Adoption. I'm, I will ask you that same question at the end of the day. What was today's objective? And I'm gonna ask you who's gonna start using command today, all right? So you'll see, we're, we have moved pretty far. See, and from the very beginning, this, this is a draft from the very, very beginning of when they started putting this, this whole program together. You guys were top of mind for Gary. He wrote this at the very beginning. This is how we want this to run. This is so important to us. So this is what they configured the whole program to run around your clients and what you requested and from a team level and an agent level. Right. All right. That's an extract from MREA2. You guys know MREA? Do you have an idea what that is? You guys know MREA2? It's still in the making. It's probably been in the making for another couple of years. <laughs> I mean, it keeps dragging on and on. But this is the basis of MREA2. Well, guess what? Command has been built to support this you know, method. So every, everything in command is built around MREA2. That's why the system and models that have been made the success of Keller Williams, that's why we build the system to support those systems and models. We're not going away. We're just reinforcing the system and models by using technology. Technology built by agents for agents. There you go. So it's all about you. And we are still doing that. We're not doing the same type of labs that we used to, right? We used to fly agents in, in Austin uh, and, and then, you know, put them in a room for two days and brainstorm. Today, we involve a lot more agents, and we do that through ideas.kw.com, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So that's it. My PowerPoint presentation is done. So we're going to dive in. So who has started to use command in the room here? Seriously using command. Dylan, I knew that. Jonathan, I knew that. And you have started, okay. Who has no contacts in command? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Safety in numbers, right? You don't even have yourself in command? Really, okay. What about you, Jack? Nothing. One of my team members did. Wow. That's pretty cool. If I go into command, because I can go in and I, I log in and I look around. Right. I can see the first document, but I can start going. Of course okay. you she can see her stuff. Are you the rainmaker? Oh, so she, you can see her stuff, right? But he, uh, he can't. No, you see your stuff. I don't think well, yeah. I'm actually having trouble logging in. Well, you know what? This morning it's not about me helping you logging in. That, that's on you. I know. That's on you. <laughs> that we should be past that, all right? That's not to put you on the spot, but I wish I do. <laughs> Are you having issues logging in? Like, is, is it an internet issue? 
I'm hardwired, so I don't have any issue because we had a few people actually use their cell phones yesterday for Agent Wi-Fi as a hotspot. That might help you out if you know how to do that. Um, Enter. It's spinning. It's spinning. This yeah, is, like yeah, if your password's wrong, this is an O and this okay. is a zero. This is all capitals. Uh, Bo, did you yes. mention if people, if you have your phone connected on Wi-Fi, take it off? Because that, that's going to cut in half the, the requirements. Okay? And even better, sometimes it's I use right. my phone as a hotspot to get on the internet. Because sometimes the, the places where I go, the internet is not, is not strong enough, so I use my phone instead. So if you can do that, do that. It's, at least you're going to have the same service all day long. Does that make sense? Okay, so who doesn't have any good service right now? Pretty much everyone, eh? Have you managed to get in? No, I did. I just don't have a hotspot. Ah, uh, okay. Also make sure you're using Google Chrome. Yes, oh, that matters. Please, please. Yes. For the Mac matters. fan, for the Mac fan, please go to Chrome. Get Safari. Yes. Yes. Uh, are you an agent? You're an admin? Log as him. Because admins don't have don't have their own credentials yet. Okay? Coming. Yeah. And the reason is, you know white pages? Okay? We're we're scrapping all of that. We're replacing it by a new system called people and organization. And that's not quite ready. Some pieces of it are ready, and we're st we've started to connect command to it but the whole thing is not ready yet. And that's where all of your roles will exist. Once that's completed, then you're gonna have your credentials. We're gonna know exactly, yeah, we're gonna know exactly which right and permissions to give you. Okay, who are the rainmakers in the room? One, two, three, four, rainmaker. Uh, have you decided who's the rainmaker? <laughs> 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 uh, who is the rainmaker in white pages? You're the one. So when you log into command, you're going to know if you're the rainmaker because you're going to have access. Okay, perfect, perfect. Who has, so you don't have any contacts in command, right? You do? Okay, where, where, did, where, where did they import from? <coughs> Scott Leroy. Okay. Salud. Yeah, it was a CSV file, that's perfect. From what? From E Edge or from yeah. from E Edge? So, did he brought all the notes and everything? Yeah, like I'm working on trying to catch that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Yay! So he brought everything from. If he uses if he used CSV, that's the best method for E Edge, because if you use the um, built-in integration to command with the Edge. It doesn't bring the notes. It doesn't. There's a lot of information it doesn't bring. Yeah, like my notes are there. So if yeah. your notes are there, that's awesome. That's great. All right. Anybody else? Any other rainmaker? Who, I know you don't have any data. I know Jack doesn't have. So what you're going to have to do once we get to the contact, you're going to have to create your own at least one or two contacts in in your database to 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 keep following. Which which is uh, the exact contact? Exact contact. Okay. okay. So so we're going to talk a little bit more now about the apps that do work with it and how to get your data from one program. How to do you another. call? How do you call it? Uh, I exact right. Exact. I believe that's the way. Yeah. yeah so they are in investigating here. However. I put However, however, if I go to Zapier, which is, I think, I believe I, I saw it there. I uh, exact, no, it's not there. So yeah, you're gonna have to go through the, you're gonna have through the hard road. Yeah, all right. But there, there are other roads, and once we get there, we can chat about that, all right? 
So you need to be logged into command. Uh, admins need to be logged in as Rainmakers, as they have to use their credentials. If the Rainmaker is logged in and the admin is logged in, as long as they're not logged in on the same computer, it's gonna work. No problem. So she can make changes, he can make changes, or she, no problem. Uh, the very first thing when you log in as a Rainmaker, you're gonna see a team selection at the top. You see that, Rainmakers? I didn't hear yes. yes. All right, thank you. I told you I'm gonna fall asleep if you don't uh, help me out. All right, so once your team is selected, I want you to go into your settings because the, the, the first thing we wanna do this morning is to set you up, set the base properly so that every pieces that we use after works. All right, so you go to settings. And team members can go in settings and, and follow. There will only be a few things that you guys won't be able to, to do in command. Okay, there are some configurations, some parameters that are only visible by the rain makers. Okay? All right, you need to connect your Facebook page. Pages. Brad, it's on you, my friend. Sorry. Okay, can we try to reset it or do something? Uh, it it what? It'll kill everything. I guess. You have spot, so you're okay. You have spot, I guess. Right? Yeah. You, you, <laughs> but you have spot, right? So you're fine. What about you? You're fine. What about you? Are you fine? Okay. Can you have spot on your phone or something? Ah, oh, you don't, eh? Uh, I can have spot someone. I have a lot of data. I have a lot. I have gigs and gi I have 14, 14 gigs a month. I use about two. No, not even so. Nobody could spot, have spot one or two. I mean, I, I'm not going to have, I can't have spot. Okay, so what is my password now? I have to go to my, I go to, yeah. Here. My, my phone is uh, Jill's iPhone. Not like I don't know. Oh, okay. About Just a second. Good point. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right then. Okay, so let me find. I'm going to ask that question. I'm following you, Jeff. That's going to help. At a top speed. You. Don't stop. Okay, so. Yeah, I feel okay. Yeah, 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 that'd be good. Your husband and wife, right? So you don't hide anything. You shouldn't. <laughs> You're there? You're there? All right. So the only thing is, uh, it's going to discharge rapidly. So um, if I. Let me know if I bring it up here and plug it, if it still works. Whoa. So remotely, I'm sure that for all those remote, I'm sure your internet access is awesome. <laughs> is it still good if you, if you go around? Girls? Is, you go around the works okay okay perfect on uh, wireless if it's a Wi-Fi option because he's hardwired so. so who else is not working well now well you're not logged in okay no, but say forgot password. It forgot password. Then it's going to send 
you're going to specify your email or your username. And then it's going to send you an email and you're going to reset your password. So we're all in? You're in? You're in? You're good to go? Okay. You're good to go? I'm in it. Oh, yours is a Mac too. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's then. Um, Try that one. I did it. I can't do it unless yeah. I have everybody else. You have contacts on there, though. Okay, Brad. Oh, Brad. Oh, that's strange. Right here. Where did they come from? Yes. Okay, so when, when I went into Etsy and looked, they weren't going to have um, my agency account. Like you can you connect multiple pages. Oh, can you? Okay. oh yes, you do. So once your Facebook is connected, oh, you only have is it? To, no, okay, just connect it. You see? Yeah. So yeah. So here's what he was talking. Yeah, do one for then I go back and you connect one at a time. So manage, manage. Yeah, or, or connect more. Sorry. You're right. Make sense? No. Right. So, okay. We're back. We're back. So, everybody is okay with, with the internet? Not really. So, what I want you to do right now is connect your Facebook accounts. So, you're going to need to connect one page first, and then you connect. You can connect multiple pages after. You just connect more, connect more. Remember, on Facebook, it's just Instagram is the same account as Facebook, okay? Uh, on Facebook, you need to connect your business page in order, in order to be able to do ads. And you're going to need to connect your other page for posts, all right? So you need to connect both. So you're going to have Facebook posts, and I also have uh, Facebook for ads. I'm not an agent. I don't need to connect. I'm not pushing any ads. I would be marketing you guys, <laughs> not me, right? So if my Facebook is blocked on the Facebook no. no. Well, it's going to try to connect to her Facebook page when she tries to connect. To no, that, no, so because she's going to log in with her credentials. Okay. So it's so, going to be like if it was you. Right. But if the admin is logged in under their <coughs> own, if they have their own credentials and logged in, it's going to try and connect to their Facebook page. So you have they to won't log need, out of But they the won't need to page. do that. They won't need to do that. Because she's there, she's logged in as her account, but I'm logged in as her user. That's perfect. No issues. No issues. But they, all they have to do is log out of their Facebook page and then and then log into yours on their computer and it will then connect to the to the correct right. Facebook page. Okay, then Twitter, uh, I heard that Twitter seems to have a little issue. Just uh, if you go to the question mark at the top there, you can chat with support. No. Yeah. But that can wait till that's, that's not the most right. critical. Correct. So, so if I go back up here, connect more. Yeah. But it doesn't actually like connect in. Yeah. And the same thing that the ads that you're creating yeah. is same going thing happens to your or happens. Facebook page. Yeah. Because yeah. wherever you, whatever Facebook page like you're connecting app. here is where your ad is going to show. No, but you're going to see those pages where your posts when you go to campaigns. Oh. It, it, it is actually okay. connecting That's to those great. pages. Then it doesn't matter. Okay. Which Even it doesn't show, show, you know which one you did. But it's always going to show you your list of in pages. Campaigns. And in campaigns, it's going to show you those that are connected. And it will offer you to connect more within campaigns. Oh, you yes. won't have to come back here. Yes. OK? The ads, though, the ads that you do have to go on your business Facebook page. Yeah. Posts can go on any, bit, any, po any page you want, anyone that's affiliated with your account. Okay. After Facebook, after Facebook, after Facebook, you must, you must configure the mail jet. You have no choice. It's free. You hit connect, and it's going to ask you for your email address. Just put in your email address. You're good to go. Uh, I have a question. Will yes. Bomb Bomb eventually be connected to this? Yes. Yes. The answer, Anne, is yes. No, All right. Now yeah, or yeah. not? 
No, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Already. It's in the works. Okay, thank it, you. It is in the works. Bomb Bomb is a already identified as a partner on the marketplace. Okay, awesome. Thank the marketplace you. is up here. Yeah. I'll show you some interesting stuff there. Okay, so ha who has not configured the mail jet? You need to configure it. So click on it. Wherever put you in want the, your responses to go. Put in the, you are you the rainmaker? No, no. Okay. Put her email address. Done. Are you still? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you HubSpot on your phone or? Okay. So let me see. And you have a Mac, so. It, okay. Right there. Next page. Yeah. Okay. And even if you see connect more, it's show you the same choices. It is connected. So you just have to connect the others. And if you forget to connect them there, once we are in campaigns and we do a Facebook campaign, if it Hi. if the page you want to push it to is not connected, it will offer re, offer you the choice, your data from the option to connect one more, program even to from another. there. Yes. So you can synchronize two okay. can you go to mail together, and you can. Have the flow of information between her two. email address. Zapier is yeah, because when you when command is going to send, one program to I'll, I'll so explain it's a it. One way highway. PySync will move it both ways. You can actually connect two accounts. Team, teams, teams. <laughs> Mailjet here. What is it used for? It is not used for email campaigns. It is used for transactional type email that are sent by command on your behalf. For example, if I put a contact on a smart plan, okay, and let's say a neighborhood nurture smart plan, which is going to go out every two weeks to your client or clients, it's going to go out through MailJet. So I get your email, beautiful neighborhood email, and I want to hit reply. Where is it going to go? It's going to go to the email address you configure here. So you don't want that to go in no, in no, in no, no man's land. You want, to get, you want to hear about that. For example, you send me your beautiful neighborhood nurture smart, uh, email. I love it. I send it to my brother. And then I reply to you, I sent it to my brother. Don't you want to know about it? Would you, know, would you want to know about it? Of course, because that's how you make money, right? You had a question, uh, Dylan? No? OK, I thought you did. Yeah, okay. okay. You're setting her up. So it's her. You're also an agent. So when you log into your agent account, you're going to put your email address because you are nurturing your own set of contacts, right? Her contacts and your contacts, they all belong to her. Okay, let's do that for first. All contacts for teams are owned by the Rainmaker. It is the Rainmaker responsibility to assign contacts to team members. And if you do, uh, uh, I don't know, any kind of interaction with your contacts, it's your thing. But she has 100% visibility into everything you do. But she's going to have her own set of contacts as well. They still have theirs. Okay. So yeah. Who's Becky? That's OK. You need to upload those contacts into her account. It's a must. Otherwise, you own those contacts. So wherever you import the contact, the account you import the contact to becomes the owner. You don't want that. You want to import the contacts into her account. Make sure that you have a tag that shows that those contacts are yours. Once they are in her account in command, she can select filter with your tag, select all those contacts, assign them to you, and they're yours. Okay. Once. Once command is up and running for them, if she creates a contact, she's the, the rainmaker is the owner. So 
I'm talking just on the import. When you import contacts into command. It's the word upload I don't like. Right. What do you mean? Create? Create. OK, yeah. if you create manually a contact in command by any team member, the Rainmaker is the owner. OK, we're only talking about the original, first original import of data of contacts. Through CSV so, or? Through whatever means you use, you want them all to be assigned first to the Rainmaker. And then the rainmaker or the admin can go in and share them all with the individual agents. That's why we want you to put a tag on them. And then they filter out to everybody, but then everyone can see them. But after, when you enter a contact into your own, Becky, because you're part of the team, it's going to show up then on her database as well as your database. It's just going to be identified as your contact. Okay, so. Does that, does that clarify? Does that? put the pieces of the puzzle together. I think it did for the people out there as well. Okay. The other thing is, right now, admins do not have their own login. You must log in as the Rainmaker. And I, and I really want to make that clear. They will eventually have their own access. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So but if you are an individual agent, and you are a licensed agent, you still will have your own command as well as being part of the team. And you're doing admin work as well, so you just depends on how you log in, whether you're going to see just yours or or just hers for setup. You had a question? So I didn't know that you updated the account. So you have the account. Into your account? Mine. And you're not the Rainmaker. Okay. So the Rainmaker can you're gonna to have to share those contact with your Rainmaker which should be the other way around. Yeah. The Rainmaker should be sharing contacts with you because she should own those right. contacts. Uh, the, the other thing is you're going to have to work on trust. Why? Because if you want to be able to export contact, and let me give you a scenario that happened two weeks ago, OK? There's a, a, team, a, a Rainmaker who fires a team assistant. They use top producer or follow-up bus, I don't remember which one. And that, was, that happens on a Friday afternoon. So the, the team assistant, what she did, because nobody else in the office knew about it, and the market center closed at 3 o'clock. So what she did, she phoned the CRM uh, software vendor, and she said, I lost my laptop. You know, I lost my access to, uh, to the system, so could you help me? They helped her out. She went back into the market center. They have, it on, they have her on tape. And she went in and she exported all of the contacts from the CRM and she ran away with it. All right? So the, the safeguard that we have in command is that even if you call support, they will never do that. Ever, ever, ever. I know them. They're tough. Right? Even if you promise them that you are who you are, I don't care. You have to go by the rules. The only way you're going to be able to export the contacts is if you own them. If in the database it's you're marked as the owner of the contact, then you can export. So if you import the contacts at the Rainmaker account, she's the owner. Now you are the owner of those contacts. So three months, you have a fight with her or with him, whatever, and say, hey, get lost. I'm going to export all my contacts. That's, that's the only thing. How do you fix that? Have, have you done a lot of work to your contacts in, in command? You've done? So it's kind of, uh, there's no work around. There's no work around. It is what it is. How often can you import contacts? Millions of times. So you import, you just wipe, you re-import. But the question I asked her, did you do a lot of work on your contacts? And she said yes. Once they so were already in, you did. So you don't want to wipe it out. You started that already. That's a good question that I can't answer, unfortunately. Yeah, they were like, why wouldn't the team member not be allowed yeah. to update, enter contacts? Yeah. Not enter contacts, but import. Right, import. Ori yeah, because uh, originally is what you're saying. When she creates a contact now, your Rainmaker is going to be the owner. That's yes. for sure. That's but for sure. 
Yeah, yeah. Once, once, if they have done like she has done um, and uploaded already onto her own, can she not just click them all and share them with her Rainmaker? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's going to share with the yes. Rainmaker, absolutely. But that way, it, it should have been... But, Right, but she's the owner. Right, but it. she's the That's owner. True. But yeah, it it just it, it just means that you're the owner and the other guy isn't. But if you give them full per as a rainmaker, they have full permission for everything anyway. One day, <laughs> the real way of doing it, okay, the the correct way of doing it. I have my source database: top producer, follow up boss, I exact, whatever, okay, and I have, I don't know, three team members. And I'm the rainmaker here, and I have 900 contacts in my database. Each one have 300. Okay, John, Mary, and Joseph. So what I need to do before moving it to command is to prep, prepare my database before I, I get the data out. So what I would do, I would create a John tag, a Mary tag, and a Joseph tag. And I would assign my John tag to all my 300 agents here, at contacts. Same thing for Mary, same thing for Joseph. Then I would export my contacts. I would import them in command at the Rainmaker account. Then the Rainmaker would filter the database by John, using the John's tag, take all of those contacts, assign them to John. Take all the Mary's contacts, assign them to Mary, etc. Done. All right. So then the rainmaker remains the owner, and all your database is organized. And that will take minutes. So, in, in, like in this case, that makes sense to me. What happens is, um, so let's say I was the agent on the team, and we had we have an agreement that my contacts were my contacts, and the contacts that I get from the rainmaker were the team contacts. So, could we have a mixture of both, where I'm uploading my own data? So you agree with me, I'm the Rainmaker, you're the team member. Okay, we agree that those 10 contacts are yours. When you leave, they're yours. Exactly. All right, I'm going to create a tag. Uh, I don't call it personal Dylan. Yeah. Right, PD. And I'm going to assign that PD tag to those 10, and that tag will stick with those contacts forever. So when it is time for you to leave the team, me the Rainmaker, I'm going to export all the PD contacts and send that to you and give that to you. Okay, so you would Make sense? recommend uploading it to, or, or importing it into your 100%. Account, 100%. Rather than you. Yeah. Okay. Well, the other way would work as well. Okay. The okay. other way would work as well. It really depends on how you want your team set up. So really, it's the it, rainmaker. Uh, the, it's the rainmaker's choice. As the choice. rainmaker, you get to make these decisions. They, they've built it so that you get to make these decisions. This isn't uh, on because every team is going to operate differently. So really, it's on you to determine how we. Uh, you can play with it almost any way you want. However, the best case scenario is everything go into the rainmaker and then you share them out. It's cleaner. Them. If you're just setting up your database for the first time. Right. If you've already got it in there, like you do, then I would suggest you just share with your Rainmaker and you're good. But those yeah. ones, then you have to come to an agreement if you ever leave the team how that's going to look. I would go with my scenario. And because I just thought of something, uh, when you create an opportunity, can you create an opportunity with a contact that is owned by you but yet shared through with the Rainmaker. If, so there, there's a situation here, I'm not, there's a gray zone, there's a gray zone. I'm not sure, I would have to ask people in Austin. Okay, are we good with that? Okay, Jack, you're okay because you have, you didn't import your contacts yet, so. <laughs> well, what database do you use right now? No. Is it a one-time thing to import your contacts? No, you can import them multiple times. I mean, I really love, do you guys know who Marie Kondo is? She wrote a bunch of books about cleaning up, this little cute Japanese lady who wrote all these books about cleaning up things in your house, cleaning up your world, cleaning up your closets. Well, this is kind of the same idea. Whatever you have already existing, take the time to filter it, to clean it up, to take it to the people that you really love and you really want to do business with. Yeah. Um, and so once you do that, wherever you house your contacts right now, 
that, then you import them. And if you don't like it, you can wipe it out and do it again. If you didn't like the way it imported or so. Something's missing. On, depending on what program you use, if you um, export to a CSV, you can sort by columns. You can see if they're missing information. You can see who you want. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with it in a CSV file. Yeah. If you're doing PySync so that both programs are synced, together, two of your programs, then everything you do in one program is in the other and everything you do in this one goes back to that one. You can you can set it up so that they talk to each other. So then you once you've got your database and command set up the way you want, you then you can let go of your other program and save yourself a bunch of money because the new one's not costing you anything. How much does command cost already? What, what, what does that mean? I want to hear I want to hear it. Zero. Oh. No additional Finally. fees for what you're going to use today, and you get to let go. I mean, we had a couple in Toronto who spent $30,000 a year on their contact management program. They were so excited, they stayed after so we could help them for over an hour to get everything set up because they want that money for their grandkids. They have like two new little grandkids. They're like, well, what can we do with 30 grand a year? Hey, in our pockets. Yes, Jack. Mail, you're gonna use do you're gonna use both. Oh, okay. Mailjet, you have no choice. Okay. And there's no cost. For there's no cost. Okay, no Mailjet cost. and Mailchimp are different. Okay, so Mailjet is what what the, the your contacts are gonna email back to you with that email address. You're just establishing that. Mailchimp is when you're doing mass emails and they're going out and you need a mail an email delivery service something and there is a charge for that. They are going to charge you for that, um, and we're working on getting a different program at Austin that's go that, that's possibly going to replace that because they're not super happy with the changes that happened. So once well, they the, what, once they get the new program, we're going to see that up here as well. Okay? Our our objective is to replace Mailchimp with our own built-in because we we already have all your contacts. You can already create lists. You create your design. You, you have everything you need in command except the handshake of the email. Sending the emails, unsubscribe type of thing, okay? So we're uh, negotiating with large uh, companies like Mailgun. They are shooting out like tens of millions of emails an hour, right? And that's what they do. They don't do mail campaigns. They just handle the email protocols between the sender and the recipients. That's what they, so... And we're gonna we're gonna pick up the tab for that, so it's not gonna cost you anything anymore. Even if you send 500 emails or 5,000 emails, it doesn't matter. It's gonna right. remain the same. Yeah. It's if it's under a thousand, <coughs> it'll remain the same. If it, it's, it's over, it's well, the same. It's the same. It's the it depends same. on how how much you email. I mean, honestly, they have their limits. They set them. And if you exceed them, they're going to charge you. If they, yeah. you don't exceed them, they're not going to charge you. It's a, there's no cost. It's the same thing. You connect command to your existing email, uh, Mailchimp account. Yes. There's no yes. extra cost. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, okay, you're gonna tag her, yeah. but then from the Rainmaker account, you have to share those contacts with her, so that when she logs in, the only thing she sees are those contacts. Right. She doesn't see the other team member contacts. Okay, now, so what the, the, rain, the what question, the Rainmaker can do? The question was, can I uh, tell people in Cyberland? The question was about tagging the people in a team member database and how and if that tag shows up in the future yeah on there yes it will and, and they can remove it if they want to once we oh. once you share all the yeah. contacts with them you could remove it but why would you because that tells you that they're that yeah. they're yours and then if you ever want to move it back you you well, move them We'll go through that. Yes, we're going to show you how to share them uh, yeah. after you tag them, it's how to actually put, easy, assign them easy. to different uh, <laughs> team members. Yes. I just have a question again about the mailbox. Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. For you. And then for your team member, it's going to be going back to her. Right. You don't want to have all the emails back that no, for those that she sent because you have your own contacts right. to manage, right? So you're going to manage your own set. She's going to manage her own set and so So each team member still is going to go in and set up their profile individually as an agent. And then you as the Rainmaker have yours. So if you send out anything, it comes back to you in MailJet. If she sends out anything, yeah, it comes back so. to her. You don't want all of their, I mean, if you, some people, we had a guy who has 167 people on his team. He doesn't want all their emails coming back to him. Yeah. That would be very upsetting. Yes. Yeah. My next question is, if, if we have all different people, does somebody, do we get? No, Facebook, you're going to use the team Facebook. Yeah. Yes. That, that's the rule, right? Yes. You want to use that channel for your marketing, all right? Can you look if we have any questions related yes. to that, please? Yes, I will. And because sir. we need to go to Twilio. You guys know what Twilio is? Twilio's evil brother. <laughs> <laughs> if an agent already uploaded contacts to command, can the Rainmaker see them, or do they need to share them they with the They need to share them they with need. the Rainmaker because they are now owned by that team member. If they haven't done anything to those contacts, I would strongly suggest go to, we're going to show you command settings, database, database wipe, wipe it all, and then re-import those contacts at the Rainma into the Rainmaker's account. So if you Correct. Put, uh, a contact into their database, yes. they have to share it? No, 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 no. Automatically it's owned by the Rainmaker. Afterwards. Afterwards. We're only talking <coughs> for about the first level. Import right. the original one. Yeah. After that, every time a new contact is entered, by it's going to be member, visible it's by great. the Rainmaker. It is, automatically. So you're going to see, or if you get a lead back from a contact page, that they a lead capture that you haven't actually had any contact with, you're going to see those as well, and we're going to show you those later. Okay? You're going to see, the team member is going to see the lead, other team members won't see the lead, but the Rainmaker will, because that's his database, his or her, right? Okay, tool you is to text messages, what MailChimp is to email. So Twilio is a paid membership. It's a paid service. I've signed up for it like eight months ago. I loaded $20 into it and I'm still going. So what does it mean? It means that now I can send it. I can broadcast a test message to 50, 50 contacts at a time, 25 contacts at a time. And everything that I'm sending through command, I'm texting through my laptop. Right? And when I send a text out to a contact, that text message shows up in the timeline. When they reply, that reply shows in the timeline. I get it on Kelly. Life, life is beautiful. The only thing you have to make sure when you set up your Twilio account for the first time, make sure you pick a local area phone, code. Phone number. A yeah. local phone number. So you want your area code. They'll assign you a phone number, but you want that local area code for wherever you are living. Yeah, okay. so that's going to be a new phone number for your contacts. So when I send a, uh, a, the first a text, text the first few texts I send, I say, hi, Jill here, right? And then I, I, can, I can just add my text, add a link, send it out. I'm telling you, it's great. I love it. Why? For a number of reasons. I love it because I don't have to do it on my phone. It's faster on a keyboard. Think about your admin. She doesn't have your phone, right? So she can send texts on your behalf from her command, from home, from work, from wherever. And it's keeping everything in a timeline. Show up on your phone as well. And they show up on Kelly. And they show up on Kelly and they show up in command. So you can't miss it. So that is correct. Yes. But see, why, I wouldn't want to confuse my clients because it's supposed to say, okay. no yes, no. I do. Yes. Because, okay. you know, my assistant uses Kelly all the time. Yes. What about you? Yeah, I do. Okay. But I, I don't use it as much, of course. No. Only, you you, know, you I, will. I've seen the benefit of it. You will. <laughs> so with that being said, my concern then is, let's just say I had these other contacts that I have a good relationship with, but I also use them now in the system, and you get another message from me. Yeah, but you, you, it's the same thing the first time. If you, if you change phone and you change phone numbers or whatever, you got, you've trained your database to your phone number, right? 
Now you're going to have to train them slowly over they, time. It's so easy. I mean, he texted me from when we were in Mega Camp from his computer. And I just add, he said, this is Jill. And he texted me whatever he needed to do because he was standing in there. I added it as a second mobile number to My, his contact that, that was lives it. in here. That was so it. And that's, and now every time it just says his name on it. So it's, it doesn't make it difficult. Okay, so Yes. Well, people will adapt slowly. So I guess your first message would be like, hey, add this to my contact. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. This is, this is if you want to text a, me, text yeah. me there. Right. That this is my business text, and I will reply faster. Right. So Boom. we're not, I mean, you're right about if it's a personal contact, that you're, it's also a personal friend, and, and you just have to tell them, hey, just add this as a second mobile number to me because I'm going to text you from here every now and then. We are also working with Twilio. Uh, with a feature that should be there in like <coughs> probably in a couple of months, a month or two. Uh, and that feature will allow you to mask that Twilio phone number with your actual cell phone number. So when it comes right. back, if that person responds, will it only go to you or is it going to come in your text? In your text. Yes, the question was, well, does it actually go to, the, when they respond, does it go to Kelly or does it go to your text? It goes everywhere. Whatever. When they respond with to your Twilio text number, it goes onto their it goes to Kelly, goes to your phone, it goes to their contact. It actually will will list it up there on the contact, which is amazing because every time you communicate with them, it'll it'll log it that you. But if you do it through the Twilio account, it actually logs the content of the text. Where if you do it through your own phone, it can't log the content. And it, you'll have to actually enter a note onto their account that says, I talked to this person today by text, and this is what went on. Yeah. So yeah. that way, you're, you're, you don't have to do anything else. If, so you're, if they communicate, and they go back and forth, and it goes to your text, and if I hit reply, yes. now are they picking up my text or my phone? No, 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 no. Because, no, no yeah, right. yeah, I see. What, what Got it. Thing is we'll go back and forth, yeah. but am I, like, this, this is my concern, because yeah. it feels like, but you're not. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm using it. I love it. I, I'm telling you. And you can test it between some of your team members so you can actually, so that it will alleviate your concerns about the duplication thing. You'll be able to see how it works if you just play with it w between a couple of people. Th and and it, it will answer a lot of your questions. Think about a situation about where you are in, in a deal type of situation. And you guys are texting important information. Did we agree on this? I yes, know. we agreed on that. You want to keep those like your eyes. Well, think if you use your phone and you lose your phone, it's gone, right? But if you if you use Something yeah, God bless you. If you use command, it's all there forever. So you don't lose that. To me, this is precious. I get it. I, I understand. It's about training your your your, your database, but you're gonna get there. I use You're gonna sayings get that. that I really just like. Just a matter of time. Yeah, I had two questions. I had one here. You're gonna pay for yours. Or she's gonna pay for hers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one tenth of a cent per text or something like that. I yeah. Mean, it's cheap. Each agent needs to set up. These are specific to each agent account. These are and the Rainmakers account. The Rainmaker here is just an individual agent, but each team member needs to set up their own okay. personal, like so, an individual agent, and yeah. then we. So you're gonna have your Twilio. She's gonna have her Twilio. You entertain and nurture your contacts, right? So you're gonna send them email. You're gonna send them text message, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whatever you do, she doesn't have to be part of. However, she has 100% visibility into all of it if she decides to do so. So when she wants to take a look at your contacts and how you are nurturing your contacts, she has full visibility into that. If she goes to that contact, she's going to see everything, all the communication exchanges. But she doesn't have to be part of it on a daily basis. Understand that? OK. Yes. I'll show it to you. We're going to do a real life 
Okay, if somebody Bam. phones the number on the text from Twilio, it doesn't, it's only a text it's message. It's only a text. It does, it's not, it's not a Fido, phone call. it's not Rogers, it's not Bell, it's a text it's delivery text message service. Yes. That's all it does. If it was a cell phone service, you would have to move your line over. Then you'd have an, a new provider. But that's not what it is. It's a text messaging service. Like MailChimp is an email messaging service. Twilio, that's what it is. Okay? It says SMM text. It do, actually tells you that the first time they get the, the, the number, it tells you this is a text number only. I mean, it doesn't say that only, only, but it tells you that that's what it is. It's, it's not a cell phone number. Okay, let's keep going on. Um, oh, one more question on that. that Twilio, um, does it have like a uh, character thing, like some of the different ones that you're using computers actually, and they let you walk into the different characters? I don't know. And then no, it's an SMS. Yeah. Does it have a maximum number of characters you can type in for a, for a message? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, sometimes I don't my mom so. writes me a book this is and not I Twitter. get it in two or three different yeah. text messages. This I don't is, know. This is not Twitter. Like no, it's more than that. Right. It's more than that. It's more. Yes, Jack? Uh, can you put your email in Twilio? In Twilio? No, you can't. Remember, is... your own phone number is owned, well, virtually by you. But who, who do you, is it Rogers or Bell? Bell? It's owned by Bell. Yes, you cannot enter you your own You cannot send phone it number. over there. The question was, could you put your own cell phone number in there? And no, you can't. You if can't. They're going to assign you one. You can go and look. Like They give you options when you go in there to create your account. They say, okay, do you want this one, this one, this one? And you can click the button and say, no, I want more. Give me more. I want, I want to have a St. John, yeah. like not only can. area code. But exchange. Right. The exchange is the, the second three digits. So the area code would be like 604, and then the exchange would be the following three digits. You could have that localized in Twilio. So it looks like, okay, it's coming from my neighbor next door. Twilio owns that phone number. You pay for the account. But it's yours. It's yours. It's I mean, yours. It's assigned it's yours. to you. You own it. You. They don't own it. They were not going to give it to somebody else. Is that right. your concern? No. Well, I'm going to take you around here for a second. Go ahead. I can go Breathe. Ahead. Breathe. <laughs> okay. okay. So. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, so I'm gonna train. Why have a Twilio account? Basically, yeah. is the so question. I agree with Twilio. Yeah. Okay. I'm totally in favor of yeah. So, 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 so there's two things. Number one, I would train my database and say, okay, uh, this is Jill, and please uh, update my contact information. This is my second uh, mobile, whatever. All right. So, 70% of them will do that. 30% won't. Okay. I won't. I'm just, I'll know it's Jack, so it's Jack. Keep in mind that a couple months down the road, we're going to have that masking feature. That's it's your decision. It's your decision, 100%. I don't I think mean, anybody not, should wait on any of this, personally, because but, like Gary said when we were at Mega Camp, we're going like along like this. Anybody that hasn't even got any information in there is going to be this far behind. The competition are way down there. You it's going to take a long time for you to actually catch up because we keep moving forward. And so if the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to catch up to all the things that are actually going on here. Okay. So start using it as soon as possible. For 20 bucks, I would get a Twilio account and start playing with it, even if you don't want all your You got one already? There. She um, just did it. Kelly so. did it already, <laughs> sitting here in the class. You did it too. Yeah, and you guys did it. Um, you, you need a 14 14 character password with some kind of fancy kind of things in there, which gets a little frustrating, but. So, but play with it. So was it, was it complicated to sign up? No. no. Because the benefits of it you're going to see <laughs> as you start to use it, Jack. So it, if you can yeah. just get in there and actually start, the records that you're going to have on, a, on your contact records is going to be absolutely amazing. And when you give them the consumer app, that part of it also is going to be really interactive with that text messaging um, program with the options. So I think you're going to find the benefits will outweigh your concerns at yeah. some point in time. That so give it here? a run. Yes? I'm just going to make it in the comments. Go ahead. I, I used the two phone numbers, the two years ago. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I have another private cell phone number. Yes. I'm on the phone with my patient. Oh, okay. I get a blanket message letting them know that I have a number one. If they, they want to get in touch with you, they will get in touch with you. I yeah. Get it to them, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And they all understood it. Yeah, like, sure. All right. Okay, let's 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 move thank forward, you. guys. Thank you. And uh, thank you for letting me cuddle up and share so uh, that everyone can hear on the other I end. Because they're, I know, I know. I was like, okay, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to cuddle right up to you. So they one can of the most critical pieces, one of the most critical pieces, connect your Gmail account and your Google Calendar account. Please do that right now. Yeah. Right. Your KW email address you is not. a Gmail Are you? email address. Okay, so for those of you who You're don't set as use a it, I don't well, know. No, uh, Talk to your NCA. The thing is that every time you reach out to, Talk your, to your contacts, your because you should, it will you log it if here. you're if you're using your KW email address. So you can link whatever email address oh, you, you have out there in the global world to your it's KW email way. address. But then it's also going to flow right in the information. Every so you cannot have two you've ever had command session in the same browser at the same time. It's going to log You're on to their contacts command. once you hook up your uh, Gmail it's account. The same thing. No, I understand, but Office 365 works as well. Yes, yes, yes. So the question was: Is if can we set up Office 365? Yes, it's a little further down. Any accounts that you have that link your business to your command is what you want to connect here. Anything and everything. Some people keep information in their Google contacts, some in your iCloud contacts if you have a, uh, an iPhone, if you keep your contacts in there. All of that can be connected. It's, yeah, it's, I think so. iCloud, iCloud contacts. Cloud. Anyone, anybody here has contacts on their iPhone that they would like to sync with command? Just a couple? Okay. I'm not going to go through the process. I'm just going to show you how you do it. Okay. You go to PySync and you connect PySync. Okay. Connect the account. I'm not going to do that here because this is a test account that a lot of people are using in Austin. So connect your account right now for those of you. Go to PySync, connect the account. It's free. Okay? Once you're connected into, into PySync, you're going to say uh, connect application or it's going to show you that screen. Ton of apps. So go to the top, select iCloud. Now you're going to follow that process. iCloud is special because Apple is special. Right? I love the Macs, but I hate their software. That's it, because they're so special. So when you want to connect iCloud to, to command, you're going to have to go to your iCloud account and generate a one-time specific app password. It's going to show you, it's going to show you the, the steps. But you're going to have to do that. It's a one-time password that you're going to take. You're going to put back in, in PySync. And then your iCloud and your command will be linked and synced which means that if you make a change or add a contact in command, it's going to change or add it in, 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 your, in your cloud. And if you change a contact on your phone, it's going to make that change on command. If you use iCloud for your contacts, not email. Yeah, so all the contacts you have on your phone, basically, or your iPad, or... So have you guys connected your Gmail account? Okay, so I have a question. Yes. Can you connect the same KW email address on multiple command accounts? So if you have a, if the Rainmaker has... The answer is yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, the answer is yes. So if the Rainmaker has one team email address, like team yes. get is oh at kw.com. <laughs> yeah, I would try. Can it be on multiple? Yeah, sure. I'd try it too. 
I sure. would, I, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. yes. Although, then if every contact for every group, no, it's gonna, it's gonna it'll think them all. It's gonna index the emails with the contact that you have in account A, and it will index the email for the contacts that you have in account, account B. B. So the beauty of having your Gmail connected here is that once you load your contacts in command, if you have 5,000 contacts and you've had emails with all those 5,000 people over the last 10 years, well, suddenly all of those emails will be indexed per contact in their timeline. That's going to be like organized. Like when I did that the first time, I said, oh my god. I am organized for the first time in my life, you know? I was really happy. Because now, when I'm on the road or in an internet cafe in Mexico, if I use my Gmail account to send an email out to a client, that email is going to show in his, in his timeline. I don't have to worry about it. If I'm looking for a specific email related to you, I don't need to go in Gmail. And how am I going to search? How am I going to, I'm going to search from, to, keywords. And you know, you know as well as I do, it doesn't always work very easily. But if I go to your account and command, and I want to see all emails only, I just scroll, there it is, boom. I click on it, and then it takes me to my Gmail. We're not copying the emails. We're just indexing the emails. All right? It would be a nightmare to copy 200,000 people email database in command. I mean, it'd be huge. Once you connected your Gmail, connect your Google Calendar. Because <clears throat> that's how we're going to sync information between command and calendar. It's the only calendar that actually no. works right now? Uh, yes. yes. Well, Currently. they're not connected yet. Okay. You can access your calendar from within command, but they're not yet quite connected. We're working on that. We're going to support two calendars. Google Calendar and Come on, guys, iCal for the fan, for the Mac fan. So those will be the only two. We're not going to create one of our own. No Outlook. Although if you, uh, your Office 365, no, it's still, I don't think it's going to work. Well, it Office, won't work Office okay, do you have use Outlook? I use the Connect your Office 365 here. Yeah, and that will include the calendar? I'm con I, if I go to my account, I'm connected with my Gmail account and with my Office 365. I'm connected with both. So, what does it say? Yep, it should be like selected, says, sign in. Sorry, we're having trouble to sign you in because the URL specified request doesn't match. Issue. Support, contact support, command, not uh, not Microsoft support, <laughs> contact, KW support. Okay, because I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know why. Yeah, how do I do that? Through here? Through command? Through command. Go to question mark at the top right. Chat with support. You can chat while, we, while we're doing this. So when things don't work the way you think that they should work, support is almost always there. They can, you can either click and log in and actually get them to, uh, you can in, initiate a chat, or you can send them an email, or you can post some great idea, which would be posted on ideas.kw.com when you have a brainstorm that said, hey, this would work better for my business. Okay. Um, but yeah, so if something's not working, if you can't connect or get an error message, They'd like to know about it. It could be a bug, or they could already have heard about it, and they'll have a fix around for you. So feel free to contact them. They're there to support us all. OK, so we're all connected. Our apps are connected, Facebook, Gmail. I see no going on here. Why? When connecting what? OK, so did it try to send it to? Uh, Two-factor notification. Yeah. Two-factor, like it's going to send you a six-digit code type of thing. You're going to put in. It doesn't do anything. So. Yeah, but. 
Yeah, okay, so put it back in. Yeah, sometimes if you have two a two level um, authorization on your, like they're, they're trying to check to make sure it's you, you can go into your Google account, shut that off temporarily, then go back in, log this in, and then come back on and do it again if you really want that two step on there. Um, I find it's annoying as all heck, but I'm trying to link all my accounts, but it, you know, just deactivate it on know. your actual Google account and that should make it work. Couldn't sign you in. So on that point, like I said, click the question mark at the top because connecting my Gmail account is like, click, select my account, put my password, otherwise I'm done. So you've, you've, have you connected your Gmail account? It went fine? Okay. Okay, should we take a 10 minute break now? Are we, are no, we, no, 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 He doesn't want to take a break, no, okay? No, no, not now. No, no. No, no I want to finish, I want to finish the settings. Okay. We're spending way too much time on this here. Okay. Uh, okay, next thing, uh, we need to go to command settings. Rainmakers, you're going to have, uh, Okay, command okay. settings is in the menu bar up here. You want to click on it so you get a drop down? Yeah. Oh, are we, are we in see. Teams? You have to make sure you're on the team up there on your top. You actually have a drop down bit bar if you're part of a team. Okay. You have to I, make sure you're on the team one. I don't see it. Rainmakers, you should see something here that's called sales pipeline in the command settings. Command settings. Oh, you see sales pipeline? Okay. Click on it. And there's, a, there's another one that's called team permissions. Please set that to no. Because if you keep that to yes, it means that you're allowing your team members to create deals on their own for which you won't have visibility. <laughs> you don't want to have that, don't you? Do you allow your team members to have deal of their own that are not part of the team at all? Okay. You do. Okay. It's, but, so you can leave yours. Uh, okay, so let's be clear here. Let's be clear. Who's your team member? No. Are you? No? no you no. are? No, I okay. Oh, sorry. So this means that today she can go into command and create a deal on her own and you don't know about it. You allow them to do so? So it's not all the deals that belong to the team. So how do you know if she's going to Let's say she does 25 deals this year, and 20 should be the team, should belong to the team, but she registers only five. How do you know? So you're going to have to trust each other, right? Or work it out somehow. Right. Okay. So you keep that to yes, okay, in your database uh, sales pipeline, team permission. You can even select the agents that will be allowed and those that won't. Yes. Are you the rainmaker? Ah, okay. Oh, you're, you're good? Okay, perfect. You're set up properly. Because you have it, right? You have that team permission button. Do you have that team permission button? Okay. Okay, we're done with that. So now let's go to... There are two more things here that I want you to uh, pay attention. Well, two for everybody and one more for the lead, for the Rainmaker. The Rainmaker, you have a lead routing button. You're going to create your route, your strategies, your agent capture. So, for example, you could tell command if a lead comes from a landing page and you could, you could set conditions, I want that lead to be routed to Mary. She has 15 minutes to put the phone call. If 15 minutes after she didn't call, then send that lead to another agent. Okay, so you could manage your lead routing that tight. Okay, it's it's, it's a sequential. It happens like automatically. If I have a lead coming from Facebook or from Google or for, from whatever for a property that's over a million dollar, Monday to Friday between eight and five, send it to John. Give him half an hour to send an email, a text message, or a phone call whatever you decide. If he doesn't do that, then depending on the 
uh, lead uh, routing that you have, like jump ball or uh, round robin, or weighted round robin, okay? So you know what jump ball is? It's going to send it to everybody, and the first one that gets it has it. Round robin, it's going to go one after the other. It's going to sign you one, then one to you, one to you, etc. Weighted round robin is going to make sure that over time you had the same amount of leads. Because maybe that week she was on vacation, so she got less leads than normal. So the weighted round robin, that's, it's going to try to uh, make it fair. So I'm not going to go through this today because we just wasted, we spent too much time on other stuff. Go through it, play with it, configure it, and you're going to have fun. All right? You're going to have fun. It's, it's lovely. <laughs> the other two things I want you to, to see are custom fields and custom tags. If you're using a, a database today and you're moving to command, and you've been using that database for a year, many years, you have, you have sliced and diced that database in a number of ways. So you probably have created fields, or you have fields in your current database that don't exist in command, but you would like to move them over, so you first have to create them in command. Or you have, you've, you've been using tags. Who, who here is using an, another database? Yeah. Are you using tags? Mm -hmm. Lots of tags, right? Like seller, buyer, golfer, pet lover, name it, right? Uh, investors, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to make sure that those tags are carried over to command. Because you just don't want to go from a, a, an existing database and suddenly go to a brand new place which is totally configured differently. You, want to, you don't want to disrupt your business. You want to move your business to to command. And over time, you're going to change it. But for now, it's a transition in the system and not in your process, right? Uh, transitioning system and process at the same time could be a little, little, uh, a little bit challenging. You still have to, to generate some incomes, right? You can't spend your day on here. So for custom tags, a custom field, I want you to experience it. So click on custom field. And I want you to add, create a custom field. Just create one, anything. Just go through there and try to learn by yourself. Just a little bit. All right, so you give it a name, and then you're going to create, a, you're gonna create a, a field type. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I had a drop down. Uh, I don't know, an exam. I'm not an agent. Why do you use that, that, that to me? If I, if I were an agent. Okay, investors. Okay, so yeah. I would use a tag. These contacts are investors. But it just tells me they are investors. What kind of investor they are, I could create a drop down saying, this is a up to $1 million investor. This is up to $5 million investor. This is a multi, this is a plex type investor. So I would create a drop down and I would add my choices in that drop down. If you click drop down, then you just keep going and add an, add an option, add another option, and so on. Right? It's pretty easy. If, if you set it as a default custom field, then it's going to show up automatically on all contact cards. Okay. So I would say, I would say don't do it for now, but, or try it and see what, how it impacts your system. And you don't have it on your system. Because you're, you didn't show Can someone tell me what the difference is between a field and a tag? You are all top teams, top users, top agents, right? So you guys, you should know that. What is the difference between a field and a tag? Take a guess. Dylan, if you already know, don't sell it. Jonathan is hiding over there, very silently. <laughs> kind of like a note or a field is more of a category. Kind of, okay. 
Any other one is willing to take a risk? Yeah, okay, a field is additional information relevant to a contact, or to any contact. A tag is just if you want to categorize your database. Yeah, yeah, right? So sometimes it may be yeah, difficult to, so. should I create a, t a, f a flag or, or, or a field? Well, a tag, you just assign a tag. A field, you have to go in and fill it up, right? So if I would say, Yesterday, we were trying to do a checkbox. But a checkbox, it's kind of, it defeats the purpose because I'm either in relationship or not. I could create a tag that says in relationship. And all those that don't have that tag, they're not in relationship. So I wouldn't need to create this. So you're going to get used to what, which one you want to use in your database over time. Well, one thing for sure, if you're using PySync, or Zapier to load data in your database and you have custom fields in your previous database, you must set those fields in command before you push them over. Otherwise, they won't see each other. So you just you just start over. That's all. Okay. All right? You, you, you won't. You won't. Thank you. Once I'm back home, you don't call me for that, okay? No, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks. Those, I, I told you this morning, we're going to have some glitches here and there. Saving sa tends to be when we have this many people in here, for some reason when we hit the save button and try to save data, it doesn't really save it. It crashes or it just wipes it out and you start with an empty screen again. So take heart in that when you do this in your own environment, this will thing. In your command settings, you see you should not see sales pipeline. Oh, you're in the rainmaker. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, we were talking uh, earlier about if you import your data and you don't like it, you'd like to do it over again. Well, you go into command settings, database, and you go to database wipe. It's a two-step process where you have to archive all of your contacts and then you delete all archive contacts. So you don't make a one-click mistake. It'll have to be a two-clicks mistake, <laughs> right? So if you call support, say, hey, 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 the system had a bug. It, no, no, you have to click it twice. You have to do two actions voluntarily <laughs> to do that. So my suggestion would, would be, if you have imported your contacts in command and you haven't done too much work on it, like a month, uh, worth of work, and you want to start fresh, go ahead and do it. But if you started to uh, assign smart plans and, and, and do these things, try to clean it up manually. That would be the best way. Any questions? We're done with settings. Yay! God, Yay. we're done with settings. Well, settings part one. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll do a couple of easy things and then we'll take a break, okay? With you guys, are you guys ready for a break? I'm always ready for a break. <laughs> this is your dashboard. You see here, I have 15 pages of tasks overdue. That's me, right? Why? Because I keep snoozing, snooze, snooze, snooze. That wouldn't be you ever, never, right? So anytime you create a task in command through the task manager on, on opportunity or on a contact, it's going to create a task that's going to pop up in Kelly all the time. It's going to remind you. It's going to remind you in here, if you don't do it, well, you're going to say, well, I, the system didn't tell me. <laughs> we tell you so many ways, right? You don't want to look. That's probably it. Uh, also, here we have your database help. And that's a very interesting part. Because database help, you see it on your home screen, and you see it in the reports here. And you're going to love what I'm going to show you later on, OK? This home screen, this dashboard, is going to change every second week. We're going to add up more and more and more to it. Like the next thing to, to come up, it would be your CGI. Do we say CGI or GCI? CGI. CGI. Your Career Growth Initiative Goals. OK. So it's going to show up here, graphical format, so you're going to see how close you are, whatever. OK. So it's going to be very, very relevant information. 
to your goals, to your business, to your day-to-day -day thing. Who do I need to call today? Who, who are my hot leads, etc. So it's going to be a dashboard that's going to talk to you. But it's in the, we're building it as we move along. It's very, it's very complex. The other main thing about all of your databases, when you're merging them, when you're putting them together, if there is no email on your contact in your current database, it will not move over into command. Or if you have an email address on uh, the husband and the wife and it's the same one, neither one of those people are going into command. Okay, so that's another reason why we need to actually have a look at our database wherever it is and clean it up. If you export to a CSV file, it's pretty easy to find out who has. You can sort and see who has email addresses and who does not. You can actually create a macro that will put a phony email address in and that will e assign them each an individual one like uh, email1 at gmail.com or at email.com and then list them all and then it'll import them all and then you have to actually, you can also create a tag that says call, call these people and find out what their email address is. Okay, so you can still import them, you just have to trick the system and then phone people because you really want to have Two things you want to have for sure in all of this uh, is their at email least, address at least. and their address address where they live. I would like to have their birthdays. I would like to have their anniversaries. Right. I'd like to have as much information. Real estate is my business. I need to know as much as possible about each one of those contacts. I need to nurture those contacts. Not only when they want to buy or sell, but in between as well. Because guess what? Buyer one day, buyer the next day, buyer another day. So every seven years on average, people are buying and selling. So you want to nurture them in between to make sure they stick with you. That's why, you know, old timers, they're going to put their, their face in the paper forever because they want to stick around, right? They want, they want people to see them. Well, you're going to do the same by using the new technology. That's all, right? Okay, let's have a little five-minute break. Five minutes, no Five more. Five minute break, guys, out there in cyber world. Take a wiggle, and then we'll get back and do what we need to do. Thank you, guys.
So then we can eat while driving. Because then it's like the speed kind of yeah. Yeah. So you can like more? Yeah. I don't think so. I think that it can yeah. add like yeah. some yeah. antacids yeah. because yeah. it's pregnant. Yeah. So we have to check all the other ones that we can share with you.
Foundation for five, everything else. Five dollars. Just because I turned myself on. Good. Okay. I'm here. If we don't set that foundation where you guys can actually build your business, nothing else is going to work. So setting up your accounts, making sure everything is linked, making sure your contacts are all in here, making sure everything is clean and tidy, like your folded clothes in your cupboard, making sure everything, all the pieces are in there is gonna help you to be able to excel at a level that you've never seen before out of any any other contact management program. All so, right. Next. All right, so we're in the contact management. So you guys should see something similar to that. Well, I have L's. 
What do, what, what do you think those are? Little L in red. Leads. Grassy. That's great. And how do I, did I generate those leads? I generated those leads like yesterday. What I, create, what I did, I created a, a landing page in command. And then I pushed an ad on Facebook, invited people to click. They clicked. They went to my landing page, took a look, woo, registered their information. The lead came here. Kelly told me that I had a new lead. Now I can view that lead, and then I can take action. So that's pretty amazing. So now we're, we have closed the circle, right? If you have a website, because you can create a landing page in here in about five seconds with a lead capture form. You're going to publish it. It's going to create a link. You can take that link and hide it behind a button on your website. So now you can say, on my website, when people want to view like detailed information on a listing, they can click a button. This is register here. They click there. They're being taken out of your website into our platform, register, and the lead is generated, is created. Okay? All right, so here you have the leads and you have the contact. What is the difference between a lead and a contact? Not you, Dylan, not you. You were on yesterday, so you know. Yeah, a contact is someone you've engaged with. So a contact is you already had a two-way communication, being text, being email, being by voice, but you already know about. A lead is it's business, but you don't know what kind of business, how big of a business it is. Is he a buyer? Is he a seller? Uh, is he an investor? Uh, how, how big of a budget does he have? Is he serious? Is he a two months, a three months, a three year? You just don't know. It's a lead, right? While a contact, you already have his information, you know where he lives, you know what it's all about. So that's the difference. So can we create an opportunity on a lead? Could, should we? Okay, even if you know nothing about that, what kind of an opportunity is that? I want to create an opportunity, but I have to set a budget, I don't know. I had to set a time frame, I don't know. Is he a buyer? You don't know. Is he a seller? You don't know. So logically, can you create an opportunity on the lead? If you don't know anything, no, you can't, right? You can create an opportunity on a contact of which you know more. All right. So this is how my database is, is set up. I have my names. I can use filters. Yeah. I can use filters and tell, and tell command. Uh, show me all the buyers I haven't spoken in the last five days. Or show me all my golf lovers because I want to send them a newsletter. Or show me whatever you decide to do. It depends on the process, business process that you have, or lead gen process that you have, uh, versus you know the marketing that you want to do. You need to nurture your database. So you're, not, you're going to nurture your database based on some criteria. Those criteria are tags. So here you can filter a lot, and we're adding more filters with time. When you, when you set up a filter, you can, you can say, OK, for example, show me all the buyers that I have been contacted in the last five days. All right? Now I can apply this filter, or I can save it. If I'm going to use that kind of filter like on a regular basis, I just save it as a smart view. Yes, sir. Yes. The real, the real talk. Okay. Talking on. Yes. Yeah. There's a few ways of doing that. So. Okay, let me finish this and then we'll go right into creating a contact. So here I can use this filter or, or save it for, you know, later use. So let's say every Monday morning I call this, these type of contacts. On Tuesday I do this kind of thing. So I'm going to create filters. So let's say I'm calling this one, uh, let's say 60 days. I'm going to say save it. I'm going to give it a name. 
buyer 60. I'm going to save it. And then all I have to do is come here anytime I need it. And I'm going to go to buyer 60 right here. Boom. All I have to do, so for example, if I tell command, show me the contacts I haven't talked to in the last 60 days. It's going to show me all of those. Then I'm going to take that list. I'm going to look at the first one. I'm going to call him. If I text him using Twilio, the system will know automatically I contacted that contact because it's all connected. If I take my phone and I call the contact, does command know? Command doesn't know. What am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to go on that contact, add an activity, activity type call on that date. Then command know I, I've contacted that person. So how would I do that? I would say, okay, I need to contact Ben. I would go here, add an activity. That would be a call that happened today. Put in my notes. All right, and then save. Then Ben would, if I refresh the list, Ben will be off that list because he's no longer part of the people I haven't talked in the last 60 days. Did you see the option there also that said broadcast to the team? So if you guys were all working on something or so, you needed to actually let everybody know, you could do that right there. Yeah. Send it out. Then everybody yeah. knows where, where they're at. All right, yes. Okay, it's even better. That's an amazing question. If the rainmaker was on the road and he wanted to actually make calls, yeah, right, and he correct. Yeah, so I can say, hey, he Kelly, he can leave a voice note through Kelly that says he made all of those calls, or he mm. can actually call through Kelly. I would do that. I would, I would call say, hey, through Kelly, Kelly, hey, Kelly, find Jason Brown. So Kelly would bring my contact, Jason Brown. I'll say, call Jason Brown. Since I'm doing the call from Kelly, Kelly is connected to command. It will automatically put a log entry saying, I've talked with Jason on that date, that time. It won't have the content of the conversation, of course. We cannot spy the phone. But because you initiated the call or the text or the email from within Kelly, it'll, it will log it in command. So that's amazing when, when you're on the road, right? Because okay. you don't have to add an activity. It's being added automatically. So because we're not in a team setting here, we can't actually broadcast to the team. We're actually yeah. not on a team. But you can see it here where it says you can broadcast to your whole team. If so that's pretty cool. That's a cool option. Yes. I know you have some color coordinates like red. You decide what those colors are. Those are tags, and you, you determine those when you create your tags. What do you mean you have all white? The tags are white. I, I know. The tags but are white, so how did you know? Oh, because they were imported by Scott Leroy. Oh, Aha. Uh -huh. That's it. Okay, but you can custom color your tags. You can change colors, yeah. Uh, I do believe so. Uh, from uh, your phone? If you go here, settings. Let me see. Command settings. Command settings. Custom, custom tags. tags. If I go okay. here. So yeah. you go name, settings, command settings, custom tags, and pick Just whatever you want and add Just whatever color you want if your tags yeah. are all edit. white. You see the pencils there? Just edit. Change the color. You're done. Okay, and see if it changes. Some people color definitely matters because they want to see it at a glance instead I'm of actually blind, reading. They're care. looking at the colors. I'm not, that's so, not true. I, for me, I would read the word, so it wouldn't matter what color my tag. I didn't put colors on any of my tags either. Okay, uh, you can search by first name, by last name. You can search everything. So when you do the search, you can search email addresses. You could search a number of ways. Okay, so re remember though, sometimes we had a, an issue yesterday where people weren't seeing. So if you click select Smart View oh. first. Okay. See where it says All Contacts or Manage Smart Views? If you don't have All Contacts clicked, you might not see everybody in your database. 
So if your first, the first thing you're going to do if you're not seeing anybody is do that. Like uh, I had it a couple times yesterday where people were adding this information and then they went to look for it and it wasn't there because this they hadn't the selected all contacts. So at the top there where you have smart views, select smart view, click on it and click all contacts so that you get to see everybody in your database. Then you're going to do a search for whoever you want. Yes? You have everything on your phone? Yes. Okay. So they're on your iCloud or they're on your Kelly? Okay. <laughs> so do you use... What's your first name? That's Dylan. Gary, Gary. Do you... Are you the rainmaker? No, you're not the rainmaker. Okay. Uh, well, you can now oh, you, you can select anything. Okay. You can go first name, last so name if you want. You're the rainmaker. She runs. She runs the show, Alicia. right? You can just <laughs> click on first name and then type Alicia. So where are your where are your contacts? Just Alicia. Okay. Or if you wanted just somebody that lived on Bob Street, you could just click address and put Bob, and then it will show you anybody that had that so address. Show me your command. So now you have options to filter all of your contacts. So you have 32 contacts yeah. loaded. Is that all of yours? It's not all of mine, but we're, we're just starting to work on it. Okay. Okay, so text messages from your phone to Twilio with your Twilio number. You can do that through Kelly. Do that through Kelly. If you go to text somebody from their contact through Kelly and you've got a Twilio account set up, it actually sends the text message then through that number. <coughs> I'm answering questions from them. Uh, no, that's from the command. No, it's from your laptop, not my laptop. <laughs> Yes. Oh, well, you have, yeah. You have to ask that first. Or your laptop. Either either through Kelly or through your laptop. You, If you go through into command, so if you're going to send a text message to any of your contacts, I don't know if I've got any, um, give me a minute here. <laughs> I don't think I have a phone number for this guy. Oh, yeah, there we go. What? I'm testing. Okay, so. Okay, so. If, sending me a text message now. If I want to send a text message to any of my contacts through my computer, not through Kelly, through the computer, all you do is go and click on their phone, phone their mobile number, and you can type a text message right here to send to Aaron. And it's going to say that it's from Jill's text number. Which is an Austin text number. That's his my Twilio, Twilio number. number. But I couldn't care which number they had. I was in Austin when I, I created my account, so they assigned me an Austin phone number. <laughs> so that's why it's 512. Right. And so if he said, I think I'm in here. Am, am I in here? Yeah. So I don't know who you sent it to? No, I didn't send it to anybody. I just deleted oh, it. But okay. I'm, I was going to send it to me. Relationships. <laughs> It all works in command. But as you know, we if you are in a relationship and I want to create a relationship in command, I need to have both of you in my database as individual contacts, right? Because whenever we do a deal and we have to send it to you for electronic signature, I have to have your email and I have to have your email. 
because you, we, right, that's the way it works. If you want to be on the safe side, right? Otherwise, she could sign for both. You don't want to have that. So I'm going to create your contact. I'm going to create your contact. I'm going to join them by a relationship, right? It's kind of double work. So I just texted myself from Jill's computer, from his account. So I have already added his name here. So it says, this is Jill. Hi, hi, Jill here. This is a test from command. So I, I've already put that text message on as an other and it's right here. email address. And so now I can respond to him, and it's going to also log it on my contact record. So I'm going to get out of here. And we'll return to that after, okay? But remember, I sent her a text which shows in her timeline. She's going to reply, and that reply is going to show in the timeline. So what does that mean? It means my assistant knows. Everybody knows. Everybody on the team, Everybody if they knows. have access, Boom. knows that your last contact with that person was, and this is what you said. Okay, guys, I want you to add a contact manually. I want to show you a couple of fancy stuff. I texted through command. Through Kelly. Through Kelly. Through Kelly, and you still is going to log it on your contact information. Or, or, or you go to Kelly here. Okay. But she could go. She could go to command. She could go to command on Kelly. Bo. Bo. Yes. She hits command on Kelly. She hits command. Contacts. She finds a contact, and she texts from there. Okay, so you log in here with your key to info. Then she will use the, the Twilio. Okay, so I'm going to add a full name. Uh, I don't know. Jason uh, Stone. Okay, Jason at mail.com. I'm just. And then, okay, you guys see the US flag? I don't care if it's a US flag or Portuguese flag or Brazilian flag. I don't care because once I save the card, it's going to become a Canadian flag. It will know that it is the Canadian uh, area code. Okay, but for now, and it, you know what? That flag is only visible by you, and it is only visible when you create or edit a contact. That's it. Other than that, so nobody will ever see that flag. Okay, so take no offense to that. Okay. Or you can. So I'm going to put in my phone number. Click there and tell Kelly to do it. Have your Twilio account all set up. Do I have any tag to add to that person? But watch this here. I'm adding a husband and wife. So I'm, I don't want to put in twice the address, twice the phone number, and twice of everything, right? So I'm going to put in the first name, and then I'm going to click Add Relationship. Right? Then it will ask me, is that the relationship contact already exists, or you want to create it? If I want to create it, I'm going to put, put in the name, and then that's it. I don't have to recreate both contacts. It will automatically create two contacts with the same profile information. Just, you know, just you know, get uh, faster. So if I do add relationship, okay, create new relationship yeah. because yeah. I don't, that, the wife is not in the database yet. So now I can just create new relationship there. And it's going to ask me for the name. Yes. I'm not sure yet. I know we are working on a household entity for those marketing features. I don't think it's ready yet. So I don't know. I know you can, okay, let's, let's see I create all of this here. Let's finish that and keep your question, okay? So now I'm gonna say add more information. Okay, what I need, I need an address. I need an address not in the middle of nowhere. I need an address somewhere in the city. What about Halifax? Anyone from Halifax here? Who you want to provide me an address? You have one? Yeah. Uh, 
Blue Jay. Street. Okay, Moncton. No. Where's Halifax? Um, yeah, right here. Hammond's Plain? No. Halifax, there we go. Okay. And then I'm going to hit create. What was the name of that card, uh, Jason? Stone. S T O N E. Jason Stone. <laughs> Jason is right here. I'm going to open it up now, guys. I want you to watch this. Because this is fancy stuff, we're starting to be in the wow factor here, okay? So I created that card, I put in the address, and boom, you live in Rockingham, don't you? That's your neighborhood, right? You're a seller. If I know where you live, now let's assume, pretend you're a seller. If you're a seller, aren't you a buyer? Because you're moving somewhere, right? Unless you want to rent, okay, but, but it's okay. Even if you rent, you're gonna rent somewhere, and where would that somewhere be? Are you? Do you want to move in Dallas, in New York, in Montreal, in Vancouver, <laughs> all of the above? Uh, do you want to New York? No, no, seriously. Where do you want to move? New York? New York. Okay. So that's pretty far from. Okay, Halifax. So I'm gonna find on the map. I'm going to type, okay, right here, I'm in Halifax right now, right? So I'm going to zoom in. Okay. So I'm going to select that neighborhood. That Tiny square. Down. 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 That one, and I'm going to put more than you want for, okay? But now you, could, you, you now you could tell me, Jill, I'm looking for Halifax, but I'm looking, I'm also looking at Ottawa, I'm also looking at Edmonton, whatever, right? So I'm going to save this, and now I have everything about you. I know where you live. I can text you. I can email you, and now I can send you some very, very cool information. What I can do here, I can add you on a smart plan. I can add you on a monthly neighborhoods nurture smart plan or bi-weekly, which means that every two weeks or every month, you're gonna, email, you're gonna get an email from me with my nice picture, logo, everything is branded. And then me, the, the consumer, I'm gonna do some actions. So let's pretend that I send it to you. I'm gonna use this preview button here which is going to give the same, same, same thing, all right? So this is what your client is going to see, okay? So you see, it's branded to me, and now I have all the neighborhoods are here that you're looking for. You can select them. You can, so you know what I've done? What's your first name again? Andrew. Andrew, you know what, Andrew, you know what I just done? I just created, okay, it's a lot of work. I just created a personalized, customized, Website just for you. Oh, took, hours. took hours, man. <laughs> it did. Literally Add took hours. Add neighborhood is back. Okay, so but I won't get there now. <laughs> so now I can say, okay, what is interesting here? Oh, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go in. I, I can look at that listing. <laughs> Are you serious? Really? Okay. So here's how it, how it looks. I can schedule a tour that's going to shoot you an email, okay? So I can see all the information. Let's go back here. I can set filters. I want a three-bedroom, two-bedroom, minimum price, etc. Apply those filters. Uh, okay, I'd like to look somewhere else. I'd like to look here. I'm going to look here. It's going to show me the listings in that area. Then I can go to other places and on and on and on. Then I can go to my neighborhood stacks page. Remember, it took me a lot of time to build this for you guys, right? So I've, I'm doing you a favor. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you like this, you, you can share it with other people too and just show them how it works. And if they want to have their own customized website, just tell them to go at the bottom 
and fill, it, fill the lead cat, the, the registration information, I will get a message. I will create one just for them. So if you want to, you want to send it to your brother, to your sister, whatever. Woo. Now I'm start. I'm starting to do lead gen with this. You don't even have to do that as long as you know where they're shopping. Okay, so how, how are you listing them and why and where they do that? Okay, so. Oh, the, why, okay. the why is obvious. Well, yeah. The why is obvious. So what we're doing, okay, so you missed a step between actually. From the neighborhood to the uh, this. From the neighborhood to this. Okay, so go back to neighborhood. So we can copy the link here or we can preview the link here. So one of the two at the bottom. Now that's going to bring up your contact page, your page where you're going to see the whole neighborhood. Okay, so this is the link that you're going to send out to your clients. Or they can click on any of these, which will show all their neighborhoods at the top. So this is the link that's going to be active and live for them. So at the bottom of this page is, is, a, a, lead con is a lead capture form. Okay, so let's say I sent it, you sent it to your brother. Okay, so what you're doing is you're just sending the link. Right? Okay, you're obviously, you're going to just okay. copy that link right there. No, no, just. Or you're going to copy so the link in their contact. See, okay, okay. let's go back. Okay, see this? Copy this link. You with me? Okay, so we're going to copy that and send it in an email. And what, or, you're, send, what you're sending them is this preview. No. No. Okay. No. No, you do not. So what the other and best option is to put them on a smart plan. Right. You do now, not have remember, to do this manually. Remember that that link is live all the time. It's real time. Data is updated in real time. So if, if I click on it today and tomorrow and the next day, I'm going to see listing changing, right? However, I want you, I want you, I want me to be in your face every two weeks. So I'm going to be putting you on a smart plan right here, smart plan, add to smart plan, and I'm going to put you on a neighborhood nurture smart plan, either monthly or biweekly. And what is, this is going to do is just saying, hey, Jill, this is a, here's a reminder. So he's going to send it to me again every two weeks or every month, as, just as a reminder, right? Because I'll go on it the first couple days, then I'll forget about it. Then two weeks later, I get another. I, I'd like to see what changed. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. We don't cover 100% of Canada. We don't cover 100% of the states. We're covering more and more as we move forward. So depending what your farming area is, you might be covered or not. Something else that we're coming up with soon, I mean, I mean very soon, is to give you the possibility of drawing a neighborhood on the map, giving it a name, and that's it. it. Now it's yours. That's coming, okay? But in the meantime, if your clients are moving anywhere else that there are neighborhoods in, you want to do that. You just keep trying. You just keep trying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Jack, with second? Yes. It's going to be the data to. Properties that are being drawn, drawn in 100%. Like 100%. It's always, it's a landing page. What we're doing is we're creating a landing page that is live forever. Now, I'm going to, I can show you how to shut it off if you need to. Because what you're going to do, you're going to go to your landing pages here. You're going to have your landing pages and your contacts landing pages. You can search for that landing page. Turn it off, if need be. Or you can rename it. You can rename it with the person's name. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. Yes?
And your matrix is your MLS system? Yes. Okay, so right now you're using an MLS system. You're, you're yeah, selecting yeah, yeah. filters and sending it. One thousand percent. Okay. Well, with that being said, it's so automatic right now for everyone that's here listening that knows what that app is doing. With this being said, if I create a, a link, yeah. okay, so you're creating okay. this yeah. to and send I to your client. Link, yeah. And this is how we put this in market. They're gonna have to hit the link. So it's okay. It's, it's okay. This is this is a first step. Okay, we call it the neighborhood. With the consumer app that's going to come out, all of that is going to be handled like piece of cake. So anytime you will never you will never have to go back on MLS ever again right. to create a profile for any one of your contacts. The app is going to manage all of that with our AI, okay. and I'll run through that this afternoon. Okay. 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 No, no, no. Okay, so right step now, one. We're, we're at step one, okay? Yes. So right now, yes, right now you have to send out this link. Yes. When the consumer app comes out. And you keep doing what you do on Matrix. Okay. And keep doing what you're doing in Matrix. When the consumer app comes out, we're gonna, our, our people are going to set their parameters. It's going to get to know their DNA and what they love, what areas they like, everything about them because of what they do within the consumer app. And then, that is going to then determine what it's going to get sent out to them every time they're looking for a new house in that area that meets that criteria. It's going to let them know that it's there. The platform is going to take over that for, for Matrix. Event, eventually. You might have to nurture her as a one-time person. You, that might be a, a but that's going to be more of a one-off still. <coughs> it's going to be because most people these days are becoming so tech savvy. They want it like they want it like Uber. They want to know. They want to know where the pizza guy is on their street. They want to be able to just click something and know what's going on in their neighborhood. So when you send them that link, that's going to update in real time, all the time, with everything that's going on in their specific neighborhoods, you don't think they're going to come back and look and find out? I think they're going to... I, I just don't... Not that I don't think they okay. will. I'm just looking for personalities, right? I'm a conservative person, and I'll look. But I'm once, not going to go looking a lot. Once, okay. the consumer, once the consumer app comes out, you won't even have to do that anymore. You, you might still for your you little won't, you, won't, you won't have to go on Matrix. You won't have to do none of that anymore. Uh, because the app, the app is going to drive it. We will have, and we're getting very, very close to that, to have 100% of all the listings in North America, all brands included, okay? So as of today, we have the most comprehensive listing database in the business, right? So with the consumer app, the person, the first time, okay, let, let's take yeah, five minutes, and we're going to close the morning on that. So... I'm your client. You send me your app, beautiful app. Unwrap it, put it on my phone. So for the first time, I'm going to use it as a traditional search. I'm looking in Moncton for a two-bedroom, uh, two-bathroom, indoor garage, in-ground pool, la, 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 all right? Boom, it's showing in that, in that part of the city. It's showing 25 listings. I open up the first listing. I scroll through the photos, and I hit the kitchen. Yeah, close it. Open up the second listing. Scroll the photo, hit the kitchen. Yeah, the app is learning about me now. It's on, in, on, on the learning mode. What do you think is going to happen on the third listing? Kitchen's going to be the first photo. I don't care who put who took the photo, how this loaded on the MLS photo. The kitchen is going to be the first one. Now I'm going to double tap on that on that kitchen photo. Tap tap. Then our AI, our exclusive AI, Keller Williams is going to analyze that photo and extract all the attributes. This is hardwood floor, ceramic floor, ceramic wall, this type of kitchen. I like this. I like that. 
now the app is learning way more about you. It's creating what we call your home DNA, right? From that moment on, whenever there's a new listing in whichever area you've selected is coming out, boom, it's going to go to your, cons to your client with the home DNA score. This matches 38% of your home DNA. Scrap it. I don't want it. I, I won't even bother looking at it. But this one matches 95% of your home DNA. Wow. Open it up. Now you're no longer the filter, and the app keeps learning and learning and learning. I want to buy in the neighborhood. <clears throat> I jump on the bike with my music on. <clears throat> I take your app. I'll brand it to you. I see your photo, everything. It's as if you were my real estate sp spiritual guide, right? Then I, clear, I open up the app and I say, start tour, put my headphone on, and start biking around. I bike around, I bike around. When I get to destination, I click end tour. The app will have collected along my way all the active listings. And when I click end tour, it will sort them all out based on my home DNA. I can say, save as a collection. I mean, do you think I'm going to go to the Remax app now? Really? Seriously? I fall in love with this. Because the next, and let's say that I've, I'm searching for properties in the range of 350 to 400,000. Tomorrow I change my mind. I go to 450. It's going to revisit all my previous collections and update them automatically. And you, and you, if I put my agent hat back on me again, you're going to go to that contact. You're going to watch the timeline, and you're going to see everything they do. Which filter they set, which listing they've, they've been in, which one they favored, which one they wanted to hide. You have 100%. So if today, before the app gets there, hey, uh, Julie, I've done something amazing for you. I've, I've built a dedicated, customized website for you. I think you're gonna love it. Do you mind if I send it to you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and do you mind if I call you back a couple of days from now and we, so we can chat about it? Yes, sure. So I'm sending it to you. You go through bang, 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 bang. And then 10 minutes before I call you, I go to your contact card and I look at what you did. What kind of conversation do we have now? It's totally different, right? We're not talking about the same thing. Not yet. Not yet. That's coming. That's coming very soon. Okay. So I know you'd be looking well, it's, for it's, it, right? It's, a, it's one of the fastest growing subdivisions in Toronto, so I would hope that it gets In Toronto? There. It should it's be there. Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I, but no, I'm talking about like, like, it's in Halifax, it's in Bedford. The oh, oh Toronto, subdivision. Halifax. Okay. Yeah, it's the fastest growing subdivision in, on the East Coast. Okay. It's not as many as that. So it's not there? No. Okay. They should. That's a really, really good point. Okay. If I hit preview here, I'm in here. So where would it be? On the other side of the highway. On the other, which highway? I'm, I'm not from you. Okay. So here? No, the other way. Okay. Okay, let's go uh, back here. Uh, uh, let me. No, uh, no, 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 no. Directions are north, west, south, east, west, go west. West, go here. west, my there boy, go north. west. And then so, north after that. Then around here? Right there. No, it couldn't find anything. It's a little bit further. Where your hand is, right there? Yeah. Yep, that's okay, just follow me here. Up more. See what okay, says, I just don't know how to. <laughs> okay. Yes. You see all those white lines that are creeks? That whole section right in there. Here? No, on the, no. On the west. The west side. There you west go. West north. Right there. Here? That whole, that's Here? The all, whole those, all those white street lines there. This. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no. not Bedford. No. Bigger. Bigger. Yeah, exactly what she's doing. Yeah. There you go. Better. 
So I have, oh, I have a lot of it. Yeah. I have a lot of listings. I have more than nine pages of listings. Yeah. yeah, nine pages of listings. That's what I mean by it being a really popular area. That's not that yeah. So I could go in there. Yeah. So you could tell your client go and draw on the map. Yes. All the listings in New Brunswick right now, it's going to give you something went wrong. We're sorry. I, I reported that. So let me see if I got an answer on that one. Rosemary. Okay. So who did I send it to? I sent it to Kelly. Okay. I sent it to Kelly. She didn't. She's in Austin. She's a couple of hours back. So. But I did report it because it happened yesterday. All of your listings are there. It's just when we click on it, something, there's, it, the link is broken. So we'll fix that. We'll fix that. Okay. Isn't it amazing? Isn't this amazing? Yes. Oh. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Jeez. I, I've, I've worked for hours building this for you guys. You have, you have them. Well, that's, that's Josh Team, our new president. He's at the age of 13. He was an engineer. He was an engineer at 13 years old. So this guy is smart, right? Like average Joe like us, right? <laughs> so he's living in the future. He understands the logic of all this. And that's only the start. I mean, it's, we are in, in we're, like, we were just born. Like all of this started to see the light of day like six months ago. Imagine where we're going to be in a year from now. I mean, the consumer app is going to, okay, here's the intent. Here's the goal. Right now, you have a banking app on your phone, right? You do all your banking on your, right? You can access your bank on the phone or on your computer, right? Uh, is it okay if I give you a toaster and a, a mixer, whatever, and you change bank? It would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? It would be a true nightmare. 15 years ago, it would have been easy. I would give you a brand new checkbook, and you were done. Because you were being paid by check, and you were paying by check. That's not the case today. So what we want to build is a real estate application for people. So that once you start putting your, your real estate requirements in there, that, that client is going to be yours forever. Because it's going to live before, during, and after any real estate deal. Once you move in, you're going to need a painter, a landscaper, a year from now, two years from now, you need a lawyer, four years from now, six years from now, you start shopping around on your app. I know. I know you're now shopping. I don't have to ask you. The app's going to tell me you're shopping again. Now, once you start shopping again, suddenly, I'm going to start getting some emails, some nurturing emails automatically. You won't have to do a thing, right? And only when I start engaging, then boom, you're going to be waking up and say, okay, it's time to talk. It's time to engage with Joe. So you'll never lose that client again. You can't. And you know what? Since all of my real estate life is in this app, I don't want to hear anything from me, Max, or Royal Apache. Nothing. They're gone. They're forever. They're gone. That's the goal behind the scene. And you know what? It's going to work. Believe Josh's team. It's going to work. When this guy sets a goal, I mean, he's serious about it. It doesn't matter if it costs 100 million or 500 million. They're going to do it to protect your business, right? So that was the, uh, the most critical thing on, on, the, uh, on, on your contacts. Load your contacts in, get their address, and start engaging with them once the, the link is fixed there. Say, hey, you know what? I have something amazing for you. I've been working all night long. <laughs> Whatever your pitch is, uh, you want, do you mind if I send it to you and take a look at it and tell me what you think? And when you, when you call that person back, say, you loved it? Oh, you, if you want to, me to do something similar for your friends or your family, just send the link to them. Ask them to go at the bottom. Register, and you're going to know that then you just registered a link, a lead. 
on that. Give me the transcription. We're going to get all that bombarded with this stuff. I'm going to be the hero. Yes, right. And I'm going to become a rock star business. You got it. Just by talking to people. Just by talking to people. Just by talking to people. You know, and if they screw up and go with Remax, I can still see them and ask them why. You know what? If someone goes with Remax, well, let's, let's you, you, send a, you send a copy of this link, you send, a, you send a copy of this link to the Remax agent and say, why don't you come to work with us? <laughs> this is what kind of tool we have, man. Yeah. Right? Son of a gun, it didn't work. He picked you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you ended up having this link, man. <laughs> what do you think of it? It's brilliant. But the most brilliant thing is uh, the our agents and teams that are paying, you know a, a system called Sync? Commission Sync? They're paying thousands of dollars a month just to get this connection here, this connectivity. Well, some of them do. Yeah, but this generates leads. How do you generate? Yeah, okay, if you if you if you use sync, there's a, there's a limited number of ways you can generate leads. It's either through marketing, on Facebook, on media, on social media, or through a website. And how do you drive traffic to that website? Through social media. Well, S SEO, yeah, but you know I can beat your SEO any any time. All I have to do is put an ad. Pay, pay for an ad on Facebook, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out just on top of you all the time. And SEO is easy when you understand how to do it, yeah. right? So with the new website coming out of command as October 1st for all of you agents, you're going to have brand new websites free of charge, right? That doesn't mean you, you kill your current website. It means you have an additional visibility out there. SEO is going to be to the roof because it's all about listings. So the addresses will be everywhere in that website. Yes? That's going to be fixed within a week or two. And the reason is very simple. In the United States, they use IDXs. And on those IDX, I get a, I get a listing information. It is active, active, sold. Then we know it's sold, or off market, or canceled. In Canada, I get that listing. I get that listing. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know what happened with it. It just disappeared from the feed. Because our MLSs are so protective of the data, they're protective of themselves. They want to have a reason for being, right? So they protect the data. And I know what I'm talking about. In Quebec, at Keller Williams, our website only shows Keller Williams listings. We're not allowed to show other brands' listings. That's not the law. It's the board. We're taking them to court. Yeah. No, no, it'll be fixed. It'll be fixed. So the, uh, a couple of things. Uh, we're pulling the data from DDF and from boards. So I believe in your case it's only DDF. So you listen. Pardon me? DDF is taken from MLS. Correct, correct. Okay, your board is telling CREA it's sold. CREA is not telling us it's sold. It's just take it off from the feed. That's all. It doesn't show. It only shows on the DF feed, it only shows active listings, period. What I think what you're saying is that it doesn't show the active listings. No, but okay, so I receive an active listing from DDF. I load it in my database, I set it as active. When do I set it as sold or canceled? When I know. But if I never know, nobody ever told tell me that it is sold. So what we're going to do 
If it doesn't show for uh, three or five days, I believe, we're just going to make it inactive in our database. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. It's the same in us. There are some places in the states. It's the same thing. The same thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I was told last week it would be a week or two in the making. Yes. New Brunswick. Yeah. Okay, where are you? St. John, and St. John, you're pushing your listings to Korea. Okay, so let me let me take a look here. Give me a listing address. I'm gonna see if it's in the database. Do you have an active listing in? The so you have an address for me. Birmingham Drive. Yeah. Birmingham, okay. Like that? Yeah. Birmingham Drive. And that would be in? Couldn't that have been Halifax or something easy? <laughs> Q U S? Q U I S. I S. E A M? S I uh, S I S. My goodness. Here it is. No? It's 30, oh, it's 32. 32 White Horse. So when was it loaded? Okay. Monday for Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. It, try it again tomorrow. It should be there tomorrow. A couple we should be there. Can you come and see? Okay, let's okay. let's do it for lunch. Okay, let's uh, we we'll take an hour. We're back in an hour, and this afternoon we're gonna have some fun stuff. All right. Oh yeah, a lot. All right. Thank you so much.
just waiting for some people to get back from you lunch. You know my email so address? Out in the real world? Gilles out in the cyber world? So they know. What is it? Gilles. Yes, yes. yes. Done. Yes, I am now. You can hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? At I feel like a commercial. <laughs> That's right. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So, I'll get this. Let me fire up my email. Okay. Okay, Terry, right? Yes. All right. So I'm going to click on this. Okay. Now, that's going to skew up the stats for that contact in the timeline. Because you, you're going to see in the timeline that person has visited that neighborhood, that neighborhood, that, 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 that. All right? But that's not what I want to do. That's okay. I, I know her. I've got a great So if you go back to your, say, if you just okay. update well, that. We're not quite uh, there yet. Uh, so update, we'll uh, turn the video the on as soon as. Just refresh the page. You know how to refresh your page? Here, so yeah. hang in there. You'll so see us go live in a few minutes. Nice. Thanks, Ron. Okay. So you see? Uh, so, okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show the class, I'm going to show the class that you shared that with me. Oops, something went wrong. I'll have to try it again. And I, I go at the bottom. I'm going to register, and that's going to create a lead in your system. And then you're going to get a Kelly notification. So, I'll, but not a rate, not right away. So I will, I will want you to share that with the, with the class. Says, oops, something went wrong. <laughs> Let me try to go here. Do that. Something. Something's not right in your room. So that that's not gonna work. So we're gonna have to use. Oops, where is that? Where is that going? I hate it when people I know don't have their Macs set up like mine, you know that? So, filters, what the hell is this? If I hit filters, okay, so, has neighborhood, yes, why? Okay, you only have one with neighborhood. But, you don't but have I shouldn't two. because I... I, yeah, I, I, I just selected a name. Do you have her address? Do you have this contact yes, address? I can you? I did. I put it down. No, it's not there. No, oh, okay. But it doesn't have a primary address, so. Um, and that's why I wonder, I'm like, why is it saying? Okay. So the test is not going to work with you. I'm going to have to work with somebody else. Because it, it's giving me an error message. Because probably, probably because of the primary neighborhood. It doesn't have a neighborhood. It doesn't have a primary neighborhood. I know, but it asked me to put in a primary neighborhood, and I did, and it went down here. But how yeah. do you say primary down here? You added a neighborhood. But when I click on the link, it's trying to search for, for that neighborhood, which doesn't exist. It's giving me an error message. So, how, why so is it giving me an error message? put your home address or whatever in the meantime. Okay, so Just to that. that no, 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 no. It has nothing to do. No, you don't, eh? No, 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 no. Ah. Go at the top. Edit. Go add additional information. Click additional contact information. Scroll down. Scroll. Scroll. Change the address here. Put an address where it's livable. Well, she's very livable. That's Yeah. Put an address in. Right. Oh, yeah. 
twist in this whole shit. Yeah. 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 Nah, but put something in Moncton or Fredericton or Halifax. You guys are from Halifax, right? No, St. John. Okay. Chris Pampas, this is a very old city. <laughs> probably too old. Um, okay. Well, can I search for it? Like, um, One, two, three, Main Street, Mountain. Does that exist? Yeah. Main Street, Mountain. I start typing Mountain because there's, you know how many Main Street there are in North America? Okay. okay, so scroll down and save. Okay, now it should come out with a neighborhood. Now go back down, copy the link, send it to me again. I'm going to try it. No, it says no reply. But if they hit reply, so then it goes to you. For now, that's the way it is. It's not a bug. It's not a bug. It's it's a feature. No. I know why. I know why. Go back to command. Try it again. Preview. I can preview, but it's not branded. Because you didn't do it. It does know you. It does know me, but what if it looks like I'm not going to want to give it right now. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready, 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 ready. Yeah, pardon me. I am. I'm Remite. The remote people have been hearing me and my weird stuff for the last 10 minutes. Okay, darling Brad, can the remote people see us? Okay, guys, if you can't see us, or if there's something going on out there that is not working for you, please let us know. Otherwise, we're going to rock and roll yeah. this afternoon. We get to do the fun stuff. <laughs> you guys all excited? Yeah. Did you learn something this morning? Yeah. Anybody doing happy dances in the room? Like, <laughs> All right. All right. I hope you guys are all doing happy dances out there so in Cyberland. You got text. I, I got Let's get a tax. I got a whole bunch of people saying, yeah. Okay, Ready? so Bathurst has no video. I think they have video now. Yes, Chat. we can see you. It's all in? I think we're all in. Awesome. All right. Awesome. So just uh, as a quick recap, this morning we saw the settings and we saw the contacts. Uh, okay, we'll wait when we ever have everybody here, Do we need including Jack and the person he's talking with. All right. Turn the air conditioning <laughs> off. Okay. I didn't want to yeah. finger that point it? you. Okay, but, it's, not, yeah. it's not bothering okay, we're anybody. All back. Okay, we're cool. all in. <clears throat> okay. Cool. A couple of things. A couple of things I want to show you before we leave contacts is that if I use a filter in contacts and get a list of people, for example, show me uh, all the people that have neighborhoods, right? So I'm going to apply that here. It's going to show me those. I can say, show me up to 50 per page. And then I can select them all in one shot. And when I do that, then the select bulk action becomes available. And when you click on this, you're going to see there's a lot of stuff you can do. You can export those contacts. You can export mailing labels. You can share all of them. You can also do something that I call magic. Because I can now say, Send bulk SMS if you have Twilio, right? It's going to tell you which one. No primary found for Patney, Abraham, and Armand. 
it tells you which contacts don't have actual mobile phone number, so it's going to text. Then here, I can say, hi, guys. Gilles here. I'm, I'm pleased to uh, share with you my new text number. So yeah, there's one way you could do it. And then you can say, by the way, go and take a look at this. You have a, uh, a landing page, so you can put a URL in here, and they go and they click on it. And when they do go and click on it, then you have visibility in what they do. Okay? So that's one way to do it. Uh, what you can do as well, you can add them to a mailing list, add them to a dialer. Well, the dialer portion is not there yet. So you could generate a, a dialing list that you can use outside of command. But if you have a VoIP application on your, on your desktop, like Ring Central or uh, Magic Jack or something like that, then you could <coughs> filter a list. And you're going to put the phone number here as the first column, right. and then you're going to start calling them, right, one by one. So if you want to do lead gen or follow-ups, that's how you do it. Very easy, well organized. And then you just add your notes as you go along, and that's going to be your day. Any questions on that? That's good. Okay. Uh, share contacts, if you want to share contacts between team members. So if you own the contacts, you can share it. So I could say share contact, but real, right now, me, I'm not part of a team, so I cannot share those contacts. I'm a solo agent. Right? Who do you want me to share those contacts with? <coughs> not with you. You're not in my team. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I knew. He's, he's the lead guy. He's the lead guy, right? All right. And allow agent to edit. So you can share it. If you went on holidays and you want somebody to be able to see all your contacts, you can share it with them, but well, they no, can't edit it. Well, no, they have to be in your team. Oh, they have to be in your team? They have to be in your team. You cannot share with another solo agent. Oh, okay. You cannot. No, you can unshare them uh, later. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, hmm. yeah, because they can't. I haven't seen an unshare button, but uh, on a contact. <laughs> On you, when you look at those contacts, you're going to see the assignees, then you can X them out. Oh, okay. But it's going to be one by one, I believe. And share. Otherwise, let's take a look. I don't know. Do it before you to try. Either I try it or you try it. I prefer you try it. Okay, okay. we're going to get to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's part of. That's part of a smart plan, and we will get to smart plans this afternoon. Well, that's where we're going very in a few minutes. Okay. The next, th the next thing in line is task management. What is a task? Something to do. Something to do. I love it. <laughs> what could it be? Anything. Oops. Call. Call. Text. text visit, email. Text, whatever. Email, right? I don't know. Anything. Can so a task is related either to your business, or it's, a task could be related to an opportunity or a task could be related to a contact, right? I have to send this document and it's related to Jane, right? So what I can do, you see all the you got to, it's pages and pages of those. I do it on purpose. I do it on purpose. So I can create a new task. So task name, I call it test. It's not for all day. It's going to be tomorrow at 12. And I'm going to enter a task description. Guys, I'm telling you, right now, once a task is created, you cannot edit the description. You cannot change it. That's coming. That's coming. All right? But right now, just be careful when you type in a description. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, it's a glitch. Well, it's a glitch. It's not a bug. It's something that they forgot. So, yeah, you could call it a glitch. You could, you could put it in a damn glitch, right? <laughs> so, and then I can sign here also the term. The term assign is not right because I don't want to assign this task to a contact. It's not the contact that's going to have to do that task. I want to associate that task to a contact, right? So read it differently. You're not actually assigning a task to one of your contacts. There's just, it's a task related to them. 
You're not assigned today. You get, you, you get what I mean? You look suspicious. No, I'm not talking to you, Jai. I'm talking to the person you, you were talking You look suspicious. Okay, so you got it? Okay. That's about all there is to a task. And when the task become, is due, you're going to get a notification on Kelly. Your task is due today. Right? So, so in, in saying that, Kelly, make Kelly. sure that your Kelly's notifications are turned on on your phone. You have to actually turn on notifications, allow Kelly to notify you when you get, because you, you could get a referral. You could get a referral request. You could get a referral. You could get a note about somebody um, contacting you. Once the consumers have access to this, you're going to get notes from your consumers, little text yeah. messages, et cetera. You want the, the notifications to be allowed, but you have to do that within your phone settings. Can you reassign your computer phone? Not right now. Not yet? Coming. Yeah, this is coming. Now, if you want to know if it's under development or whatever, you go to ideas.kw.com here, and you just go to, uh, you could go to uh, task manager here, and you just type in, start typing in the idea you have. How would you call it? Okay. There's the editing task. See that? It's already got like 337 clicks that, yes, they want to be able to edit tasks. Repeating task in task manager. Recurring task. I, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so. It's a duplicate idea. Duplicate idea. So recurring task. Here's 17 votes on tens of thousands of people monitoring this. I don't know why. I would like to have recurring tasks. So, you know what? I just voted for it. So it's not 18. So if you guys, it's important to you, go in, search the idea, vote to it. Because you see here, needs review, <coughs> duplicate idea, and then you're going to see under development, you're gonna, you're gonna, you can monitor the life of the idea. No, no, it, they're not linked yet. They're not just linked, not just yet. That's coming. We're going to link with iCal <clears throat> and Google Calendar. Right? Those are the only two we're going to link to. Well, probably Outlook, but I'm not sure. But the tasks do not sync in your calendar yet. Yet. They're coming, at the, they're coming up in your home page when you, when you log into command. Right? They're coming up here. So if you're here often, you can't go wrong. They're going to see them. And they're coming up into Kelly as well. So you get another reminders in Kelly. Like right now, is that what it's coming? It is. It is. It yes. is. It is. So I will get that notification to Yeah. All right? Now, okay, that's Task Manager. Uh, let's go to Smart Plans. We're going to have some fun here. Okay? Fourth icon down is your is your smart plan. So you want to actually click on that. We're going to walk you through some steps here. So everybody now, wants to actually do if, this. If you thought that you were going to go asleep after lunch, <laughs> you got it wrong. Because I'm going to have you work now. You're going to click start using smart plans. So click that. You all have to do that. And then you're going to click get started. Now you're going to configure your brand in command so that when emails or, or landing pages are being sent, it's all branded to you with your photo, your logo, your, your, your contact information, your, your office logo, everything. You need to do that. All right? Otherwise, your smart plans won't work. What is a smart plan? Smart plans is automation. It's automation to do two things, marketing automation and workflow automation. When you sign a new listing, do you have a checklist? Yeah. System list. Okay. Created by you. Where, when, you when you get an accepted offer, do you have a checklist? When you get a new lead, do you have a virtual even if it's a checklist? So you get a checklist for everything that happens in your business, right? That's workflow automation. So you can have smart plans for that. Okay? 
Uh, I could show you. Well, let's get started first, and then yeah. we'll show. Yeah, so get started. Yeah, we need to get started because we need this set up. That's going to take you about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So Again, get. this is a foundational thing. This this is the part where your, your consumers, your clients are going to see this information. This makes you compliant when you send things out. So there's all kinds of things here that you want. Okay. Ah, look at Have that you done that face. before? No. Yeah. So yeah, you really You're want done. to set this up correctly. Who has done that before? Who has already completed no, that? No, then you create you whatever She's it is that you're going to send out, and it's going to put it in the appropriate place. And we'll show you how that looks Remy? If once you get this set up. You don't select from this page. You said get, it, it gets started. Yes. Yeah. There are different smart plans. Some yeah. are for clients you, that you send out. Some still, are for right? your internal so you stuff, for your admins, for you to do. So She's working off my phone. So. <laughs> Yeah. All kinds of pieces of the puzzle here that make up the whole, kind of like building a Lego house. Somewhere. Uh, it'll be on your This is board. about your brand, um, but it's about compliance. This is your legal you log into your uh, compliance with, what's the name of your regulator here? No, 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 that's the board. It you, that'll tell you your brokerage number as well. Oh, yeah. NBREA? Okay, this is the government securities and finance or something like that, whatever. Okay, they are the one that are releasing, giving you your, your license, right? So they have, they have advertising rules, they have marketing rules, the way you have to show your photo, your brand, etc. If you want to be compliant, you have to do that. Example, in Quebec, your photo on any a business card, a website, or whatever, you could email cannot be to everybody more than five years old. So they knew what their so it's impossible. When you're it's, you, like you if you do that, then you're illegal. You, the, you're kind of the assistant you have to MBA, see real estate office, real estate agency. You could, you have to, I have a little drafted email that was norms. drafted by one of the MCAs in Vancouver. And she actually put in their broker license number and said, you're going to need your agent what? number, and you're going to need this, and you're going to need this, and here is the command yes, 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 setup, yes, yes, so yes, you yes. can do If you're the rainmaker, the there is. Set yourself up, the, so. uh, team member of the, of yeah, the exactly. The logo, no, because the doing member, business as logo it. never fits in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. Yes. So okay. Awesome. And the brokerage ID, you, you so could have logged back in. Well. So. Oh, I didn't yeah. select then select your team. Select your team. Right. So start. Get started. We will be able to resize it eventually, but right now we can't. Start. Now it's asking you to upload your, your team logo. Okay. Okay, you have a team logo? Yeah. Okay. You have it on here? Yeah. Okay, just okay. go ahead. Proceed. Okay. That's where you are. Oh, that's a task. Okay, now you want to go here. Right? <laughs> okay, so, then. Jill, touch your keyboard. <laughs> Magically turns to French. Okay, Woo! Start. Kidding. Now I have to update, <laughs> upload the uh, team good. logo. Uh, he has that magic Frenchman touch. Me? Always. Yeah, you converted Always. people's keyboards to French. <laughs> I did? No, I'm How kidding. Did I do it was that? a joke. I wish I, I wish I could just do that by thinking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we also know that your um, sometimes depending on the size of your screen, your words might get chopped in half here or there somewhere. They, th that's going to be fixed in time, so don't worry about that. The, the paragraphing will be set up properly. Just as, as much as you can get wherever there's a little red asterisk, you have to have that information in there. So put something in. If you don't know what your real estate license number is, put a number in there for now. But remember that you have to go back and get it. You have to look it up and go back and get it. Because we want to move along quite quickly here, you guys, so we get to show you everything. You're doing business as logo. That is your office logo because you Good guys job. are all underneath your brokerage. So you're all underneath KW Select or KW... Capital or KW. Oh, okay. okay. What's the other one? So New what Zealand. she would do, even on, uh, on Gary's, 
you would have to put the team logo. If you have a team logo, that's that's the standard kit of your. You have a team logo. And if you don't have no. your logo, okay, so either your concierge, okay. your agent you services, team logo, your MCA, a team logo your team leader, somebody has that logo your for your members. market center. Because you want to have, you wanna have in consistency. Nova Sco in Nova Scotia, it's, it's Aaron, and she sent it out to everybody yesterday. Your team logo. Their and picture, you can't resize it right team. now, so yeah. don't worry about it, it if you can't With their get license the number, size right. Because they have to put their license number, I'm the talking office over license top of number, Jill. if you go through the process. Um, yes. If you can't resize it right now, don't worry about it. You will be able to resize it, or you can just resize, resize it in Canva. If you already have Canva, you can resize it, or any imaging program, you can take and resize your images so that they fit. Your face, your face. You should be able to, but you're doing business as logo. Well, I, I, ex so I extracted easy. that from a huge photo. Your smiling face? Yeah, I did. This? No, that's the logo at the top. I know, but. But I could have used the same photo. Okay, watch okay. what I did. Yeah, watch. Okay, so Watch I, the magic hands here. I do said, this. upload photo. Where did I go? I went to, I'm not even sure where I went. Went here. There's a, uh, here. See, my happy face is from this picture. Right. So I said, okay, open. So I just do that. Do that like this. Shrink it. Oh. Like this. And just pour this out. Set image. Boom. There it is. Okay. So you don't have to have. What about the doing business as? Can you do the same thing with that? Of course you, you can. Show me. Prove it. <sighs> Please. <laughs> okay. There it is. Uh, what about on the top yeah. one? But the top one is not this different one. That would be the previous step. Right. Okay. That would be the about. And that's the one that's not sizable. Okay, not so sizable. branded header. That would be here. Upload photo. I have to show everything, yeah, right? Yeah, It's easier that way. Okay, like this. So Perfect. let's let's make a change. Let's do this. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So now I have one there, a photo up here, a photo right there, and a photo at the bottom. Okay. Guys, see that? But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to answer. Our logos aren't square. Okay, once you're done, let me know because we want to move past that. If you can't, if you can't set it all up today, it's okay. But that's homework for tonight. And keep in mind. For as long as you don't do this, okay. command is not going to send any automated email branded to you out of command. Because it's for compliance reason. You need to have your information there. If Carrie <coughs> just sent all of those of you from this market center. She just sent you the their logo as well. So you'll have it for when you actually complete this step later on, okay? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the steps because there's something I want to show you. Uh, along that journey. So if you follow me, nobody follows. <laughs> they had good lunch. Okay. You guys, we're going to move along here. We're not going to be able to cover all the fun stuff later where we get to create the okay. smart plans. So on that journey, look at here, guys. Oh, look, good on job. that journey here, awesome. I got a smart plan. Right now, we have six system built smart plans. They are automated, ready to go for you. What do they do? Monthly neighborhood, bi-weekly neighborhood, quarterly call plan. So if you set any one of your client on that smart, on that smart plan, command is going to create a task for you every 90 days to call that person. Right? Isn't that fantastic? Because I heard that like thousands of times in my life. Money is in the follow-ups all the time. If you don't follow up, you're not going to make money. If you follow up, something's going to happen. There's one thing interesting here. Mm -hmm. It's a few steps. 
So once you get to the smart plan and you've created all of your stuff, you can see like the eight by eight. What does that smart plan do? You would like to know? Would you like to know what it does? It does a lot. So I'm going to click view steps. And here's what it does. So first, it sends an SMS. You need to have Twilio connected. If you want command to send a text message, then it's going to wait seven days. It's going to send an email. Wait seven days. It's going to schedule a call for you to do with that contact. Wait seven days. Send another SMS. Wait seven days. Send another a neighborhood email. Wait seven days and repeat. That's eight by eight. So every week there's a touch, a different touch, a text, an email. That, that nurture your relationship. That's all. So you're always in my face. And you know what? If you're my real estate agent, I don't care. I mean, I, I'm not going to flush them. Maybe I'm going to hit trash, but I'm not going to unsubscribe. But it, you're going to be in my mind all the time, every week, every week. Right? So that's. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. If you want to see the long term nurture, it's different. So we have a monthly neighborhood. You wait 10 days, schedule a phone call, wait 10 days, email, your value email. So those are different. Right? It's already pre built in the system. All you have to do is add that person to the smart plan, boom, out it goes. But you need to have all your branding already set up. Otherwise, it won't go. Oh, OK. Well, we get, we're getting there. It's like totally not that. We're going. OK, well, that's not my fault. So I just took my bio from. OK. Next, referrals. Right. Referrals. Let's talk about money. Money, 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 money. Who has closed the referral so far using the referral network? One over there. You have closed one. You've been contacted. Yes, have you been sent referrals? On a different screen, it's going to look okay, different. Okay, so you're still walking yes, those out, right? That. And it's on okay, that's, computer, that's okay. they're actually going to uh, see that properly. Basically, referrals, so if you in my opinion, scale that down, it's going to be is the it's Keller concerned. Williams version of Western They'll Union. They'll fix the word okay. thing. Don't it's worry. money over the wire. So Wherever you guys thing. live, uh, can someone tell me? Where, okay, all of your areas are growing, aren't they? Right? More or less, right? Some more than others. Where do those people come from? I'm not in real estate. I'm in tech. You're the professionals. You're the experts. You should know your market. Where are, uh, for, for how many people, how many new people come to, to your area, area every year? Anyone can tell me? 15,000 every year? Man, oh man. That's a big business right there. And who's capturing that niche? You are. That's cool. <laughs> so do you know where those people are coming from? Uh, a lot of them are coming from other parts of the country. So from Toronto, Vancouver, Houston. OK. So what have you done to capture that market? Uh, really, really good lead match. Uh, with, with who? With who? So here's what I would do, okay? Maybe you do that, maybe you don't, but here's what I would do. Number one, I would go to my local chamber of commerce to make sure those stats are good because they know where people are coming from. Great photo. Right, they do. Google search, go to your local movers, the big movers, ask them the question, where are the people coming from? Then two things. You're gonna search on referral agents you wanna connect to or connect with at those strategic locations. Let's say they come from Toronto. We have 17 market centers in Toronto, in Ontario. So you can connect with a bunch of agents over there. Now, just don't send a connection request and say, hey, bye-bye. I'm just going to wait for you to send me money. That's not how it works. Is it the same thing when you connect with a client and say, hey, my name is Joe. Let me know when you have money for me. Is that the way it works? No, it's not the way it works. You have to nurture the same way you have to nurture your referral network. 
So once you have your strategic network in place, that's not going to take you too long. Then you go in command on Facebook and you push ads targeting consumers at those locations, saying, if you think of moving into these areas, I'm the guy, I'm the one. Guess what? At least your marketing campaign is targeting people that will, that could move to your area. Okay? So that's what I would do because that's what a kid did after family reunion last year. Was 18 year old, brand new, brand new agent. Almost went there in his pajama. They don't like to work, right? So when he started referral, he says, I'm rich. And this is exactly what he did. Google search, got the migration pattern. People are moving in and out of Dallas. Okay, Dallas is a bigger place, but there are thousands more agents. And he targeted Facebook ads, and in a year, he managed to handle about 200 referrals. Never had to quit his bedroom because he was selling those referrals back to other agents in his market center. Smart. He saw this as, let's take here in Canada. She's probably on, hey, is Sheila on? Yeah, Sheila's on today. Sheila is on. Sheila is an amazing person, and she's a Keller Williams agent in Calgary. 20 bucks. <laughs> it goes to KW Cares. And when she went to family bucks. reunion, uh, her and Bo were together, and she ended up in a referral class. I don't know, I wasn't there. When she saw that, she says, oh my God, I want to use this to make money. And she set herself a goal. <laughs> Can I share the goal? Yes. She set a goal for 2019 to make $50,000 in commission with referral. As of June 1st, she has passed double that. Just February, March, she, April, May. She, she has just done decided 000. to actively work all of the referrals. She let everybody be, know that she was there. She touched people that she in the areas where she knew people were coming from. She reached out to agents in those areas, and she's just rocking and rolling. Like yeah. she can't believe how easy it is. She doesn't okay. want any so more. So I'm giving you some credit for there. doing the work, but honestly, she says, "How come I didn't know this? Like it's like turning on the tap." And just letting people know, hey, I am a, your KW representative in Calgary. Send me anybody you've got. Even from France, she got one. So, so you guys, go. it works. So let's go to Moncton. I'm going to show, I'm going to display agents. So if I'm searching specific agents in a market center, right, or in a given area, uh, because I have, I'll do that for two reasons. Either because I have a referral I want to, shit to send to an, an agent, or I want to build my network, right? I was teaching a class in Toronto, and an agent says, Gilles, watch this. Four days ago, I received an, a connection request from an agent in Philly. I accepted. Three days later, I received this beautiful card, a card with a handwritten note in, inside thanking her for connecting and inviting her to send her referrals if one of her clients would move to Philly. The, how much do you think that costs? Nothing. What the what, what is the impression it leaves? It's it, you know. So that's what I say by nurturing your network. Once in a while, you send them a postcard, send them an email. Hi, how are you? Any business these days? So, so just the same way as you do with clients, you stay in the, in the face of your. Referral network. It's creating relationships, building relationships, again, because now you have this extra tool. So when you go to MegaCam, you go to Family Reunion, you go to any kind of training course. If you go to a training course in Toronto, or if you guys go to Halifax, or I mean, you guys could create these amazing relationships with other Keller Williams agents and do extra referral business. And oh. it keeps it all inside. It keeps it all in-house. And we see all the numbers. We see everything. We have access to the information. This is not Facebook. This is not fake information. This is a real tangible information. So you can now filter. So I can see here $15 million of business volume, 89 units, two agents. I can now dig in and see okay, how so much. This is the last 12 months. This isn't just this year. This is the last 12 months running. So it's always going to carry over. It'll drop off 
June last year and going to August once we get the transmittal done. Eric so these are all based case. on transmittal numbers yeah. that your MCA supplies to Keller Williams. And the way it's displayed here, it's always random. So I get out, I go back in, it's all going to be random again. So it's never the same, the same order. No, 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 so it's not, it's not. But better than that, now I could say uh, I want to filter agent that have at least five closed unit, five listings sold, or if it's a, if it's, if it's a buyer that I'm sending, I want to have in it X amount of buy side. Uh, I want them to have commercial, luxury, etc. You cannot fake this. Oh, because it's this is all system based. So it depends on your, the, the request of your client, who you're going to go start searching for. You're going to know your client that you're going to refer to better than anybody. So if you have somebody specific that you know wants to buy a $1.6 million house, you're going to want to be really selective about who you send that person to. So you can filter this to make sure that you're getting the right person. And then you can send it out and get the response back and then actually have some communication with those agents first before you pass off your person to somebody. It's a valid lead. It's a really great lead for them. They're going to treat it like it's a treasure. So so now based on my criteria, I have 11 agents that match those criteria or above. Now I can do two things. I can invite them or read more about them and invite them to connect with me. Or if I have a referral, if I have a lead, I'm a Keller Williams agent in Toronto. I have a client that is moving to Moncton. Is that pretty hot? Is that a qualified lead? Who am I going to, who wants the business here? All right. How much are you willing to give me? I have my number right here. So let me put my number right there. Okay. So I'm going to say, Let's say I'm, I'm not connected to any one of, one of you guys. I've selected 11 agents. It shows up here. I can now hit broadcast. I'm going to broadcast my referral to those 11 people. 25%, uh, eh, 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 eh. This buyer has a $750,000 budget, and he has a, a window of one to three months to buy, and he's going to buy. You're going to make money. I want to make money, too. He's my client. So... I'm going to go and crank it up to 35%. Those 11 agents will receive a Kelly email, a Kelly notification that there is a referral with a budget of X amount, and I want 35%. You say, no, Jill. I want the business. I'm going to offer you 40%. Right? You think you're getting business, right? Because everybody else. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this guy is amazing. Yeah, that's right. So do you guys know, that's right, you can't. Do you know what the average referral fee has been for all of Keller Williams in the last 12 months? 36.1%. For 15 billion of business volume, new business volume. Now, out of those 11 people, eight, eight aren't watching. Eight are not listening. They're not looking at Kelly. They don't know. They don't right? have their notifications turned on. There's some reason why they're not getting that broadcast. And I, and I have some horror stories about that. My Omega agent has a team of 15 who's not, who was not listening to Kelly. And I'm in the, I'm in the room teaching it. And he says, John, I need to see you because I've got pages and pages of notifications. I know I've got them. Yeah. So uh, half of them were eight. about connection. People will think it's your personal life. Half of them were about connection. The other half were about leads being sent to him. And he said, yeah, and you didn't even, you didn't even reply. The truth, the truth is alive here. Okay, not here. <laughs> it is yes. amazing. You're right. We are a little bit further behind yeah. uh, it, than they are only because you guys aren't listening to us. 
You know, we've been, we told you about this uh, in the last class and the class before. So, okay. but now that you guys are actually seeing this and it's, it's putting cash in people's pocket, we want you to all be part of that. Yes. Yeah, so. um, the other thing, couple of things on the referrals, you can show your identity or not when you broadcast a referral, that's, that's your choice. So, people so you get, won't be mad at me because you don't know it's me. So <laughs> if he knows exactly who he's sending it to and wants to communicate with you, he can or he doesn't have to. So he can actually leave himself invisible. Um, the other thing is you can put a deadline on there of people to respond to you. So they have 24 hours or 48 hours, and then it be, and then you make your choice from who responded to you, who you want to send it to. And you see what what says here: select the client from your database or create a new contact here. This will not be visible to anyone except the one you award the referral. Everybody else won't see that. They'll see the budget information. They'll see with a minimum budget, maximum budget type of thing but they won't see anything else. Now, out of the eight that are out of the picture because they're not listening, because I said I'm giving you guys 24 hours to reply to me. Once that 24 hours is gone, you're gone. You're out of the picture. So three have said yes, a 50%, a 40%, and a 35%. Now I'm going to go and look at you, you, and you. I'm going to look at your bio. I'm going to look at your numbers. Do you have a bio in here? I'm talking to him. You have a bio? Oh, we saw Devin's okay. picture up there. We could pick on right. Devin. So <laughs> about about 95% the bio. 95% of agents don't have a bio. So who are you? To me, I'm an agent looking at your profile. I don't know who you are. You got good numbers, but you're not talking to me. You're not will my client be a match with you? I don't know. I look at her, she's offering 35%, but she says she's a golf lover, my client is a golfer. She says she's, uh, she does uh, volunteer work, whatever. Oh, okay, I, I start having a connection. I know my client is gonna connect with you. Boom. It's not just about money. There we go, that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. So do you guys wanna come out here? When someone is looking for an agent, in your area, do you want to pop up and be on that page? Okay, so you're going to have to do what I'm going to do. Okay, so will a referral eventually populate an opportunity, or will you still have to go in? Will it automatically do that, or do you have to still go in? And Repeat actually, the question, please. Will the referral? referral, once it's accepted, once it goes out, will that actually create a, some kind of opportunity with your con into your contact? Yes. Yes, it will. Okay. I don't think it does that today. Right, but it will. Know, it that's, will. That's another 100%. coming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. So here's what you have to do. That's another to do. Click on your name. Profile. Now I'm going to give you some tips. If you listen to me carefully, you stand good chances of doing some business. If you don't, you don't. All right. So you're going to click on Edit Profile. And then you're going to fill this. You're going to fill this information. If it's all not already filled, your service areas. When you input a service area, you input a one city or one neighborhood at a time. Like uh, Capis, uh, Cookis, uh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you could say Moncton, Dieppe, uh, Shadiac, uh, whatever. So when you do that, you put one here. Then you click add new. Another box in open. You put one there. Add new. Another box in open. So wherever you have production, no, not or that, that you have a service or your service, no add it there. Add no, add Don't put okay. New Brunswick. Add it won't help. There you, one you can put 50. One That's city fine. per box. Or one province per box, or one neighborhood per box, whatever you want to put in that box, it's okay. Oh, okay. If you specialize you in just some right? small area okay. and it's like called the Hamptons or something, that? put no. that in there. Because if somebody okay. wants to move to that She's area nice and searches there. with that name, that's how you're going to come up. There. Yesterday, there was an agent here that's farming in a, in a neighborhood where there's about three or four no. homes. Three or four houses. Don't do that either. But when I get went on a referral and I start typing a, a location, 
No I commas, it, no boom, his province, name came out. just one If he didn't do time. that, his name would never come out. So you can put he would a provinces no at in as an additional, getting add new, referral. add the province. But probably yes, your yes, province, yes. you're going to show up under right. that province oh. anyway, but you can put it in there if you want to. But so, chances are pretty good if somebody's going to look in New Brunswick, you guys are all going to show up. Or Nova Scotia, you're all showing up. Or Newfoundland, you'll all show up. And then you can, but you can narrow it down by neighborhoods or cities. That's right, that's right. Dartmouth. Right? Down, you know downtown your neighborhoods. Halifax. So, I think where, where else do you have a. And we could do a Bedford, test. Bedford, yeah. Yes. So you can. Bedford. You're narrowing it down field by field if you want to. So you can put Halifax, and then you can put Bedford in no. another one, and then you can put no, because that's Dartmouth not how in another. Search. People will search for Shadiac or Moncton or the, the outskirts of Moncton. They have names, right? That's what you're going to do. Yes. So you yes, can put right? neighborhoods in there as well. Okay, so you, it doesn't have to All be just the city. All of it can be the neighborhoods as well. Yeah. So what if somebody's looking specifically, even though they know you, they're going to Halifax, but they want a specific neighborhood yeah. within Halifax, and so that's what if they're going to search for? If she you, has you're it and you don't, with this she's going to show right? up. <laughs> I, think you can, I think you can have about 150 really? different yeah. ones if you want to, like up that's to 150. Easy. I haven't tested it yet. Okay. Then you're going to put in your bio. Now, the bio you put in here is not for consumers. It's for other agents. You're talking to me, the agent. It's okay. Have in mind when you create this that you're going to be talking to, uh, you're going to be talking to agents that, are, that might have clients coming to you. What do you want to tell them? Why are you a good fit? So if so, you want to be the relocation expert in your area, what do you want to tell other Keller Williams agents about you? Why should I give my client to you? If I'm going to look at this bio, what's it going to tell me about you and the reason why I should send my people to you? That's what you want to put in there. Okay. And finally, you, you saw when I clicked the filters, and I said I want to have, see those with more than five close unit, more than five listing close uh, by site. If you don't turn those on here, you will never come out. If you don't turn those out, it means I don't want to share my numbers and referrals. Which doesn't mean you, you won't ever not get a referral, but if somebody's looking for specific people or a specific team that is doing production and you don't have this, you haven't opted into this, then you won't show up. Make sense? It didn't. No. no it probably no, didn't no, save it yet. No, it saved. It saves. So what's what's happening is you have probably have an error message above. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to bet? Your went fine. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes if you hit save and then close it out, you're not no, actually no, waiting no, long no. enough for it yeah, to save, yeah, especially no, with all the people save. that are on your internet. So people are saying they're hitting the save button. It's not saving. You need to You've got to really wait here. for it to finish its little thingamabobber, spinning, turning, right. wheels, thinking brains. So go down. Okay. This hand is reaching all the way to Texas and all the way back. Okay, not, not any more fast. It's like running in high heels today, oh, right, Terry? <laughs> and what a top you didn't see it. Correct. Okay. Correct. Sorry, Jeff. Does it show individual production or team production, Jill? Just team. Wipe it out. Both. Same thing for that one. Both. You can see both productions. You can click on the individual yeah. agents on the team, and it'll show the individual agents. And if you click yep. on it, it'll show the total team production at the top. Oh, you, oh yeah, turn those on. So, yes, yeah, so you get both. And it depends on how your teams are set up and what the split works yeah. like in your market center. If you have all of the numbers going to your lead agent, your Rainmaker agent, and they, they're getting all the units, then the other agents won't actually show having units. They'll just show in there as part of the team and part of the production. 
So it's really important for you to know that um, you have to think about the way you want everybody to show up on your team and whether you actually want them to have units showing or not. So then if you split it 50-50 or 60-40 or 75-25, then they get 25% of one unit and you get 75% of one unit, or else the Rainmaker gets one unit and they get zero. So it does, but that all goes to the team production anyway. All right, next. So okay, we're done with referrals, okay? So you have to keep moving. Can someone tell me, uh, you're all top agent, top team, right? You're all the best of the best on all, in, Il in all three provinces, including those that are looking Some. from far away. <laughs> so all of you, you should be able to tell me at the click of a button how much business you have brewing today. How much sellers you have, how much buyers you have, how much leases you have on the go, which files is at what stage, <laughs> what 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 items that you have to do in each file, and how much it represents as far potential income and probable income. You can all tell me that, right? Mostly. Mostly. Okay. What, what if we'd say all? In your contact <laughs> management program? Knowing where they work. Yeah. <laughs> and and know, knowing over time how much time you spend in cultivate, how much time you spend, spend in appointment, and there and there, versus all of Cal Williams, versus my the agents above my production bracket, what the hell do they do to be better than me? Well, if you're the rainmaker, then you have a select team member drop down there. So you can see each one of your agents, production, each one of their sales, we we'll call it the sales pipeline. You can see all of your individual sales pipeline for all of your agents, yours, or all of your team, right? You, you, get, you see those? All right. So, potential income, probable income. I want to know it because that's the money coming my way. I'm going to spend money today. I want to know if I'm going to be able to spend that much versus the money that's coming. It's just the nature of, yes. Okay, that, profit first. Profit, yes? No, we're gonna go. We're gonna go through that. Okay. Yeah. So, what you see here. We're gonna go through the steps now to, to show you how this actually calculates. Okay. So okay. The, and the, and why it has the probability percentages. We'll, we'll somebody, get to that in a second. Somebody. Somebody asked me yesterday. Could we take leases out of there? No. I mean, just don't look at it. <laughs> if you don't do any leases, just don't look at it. Yeah, I mean, your, yours will always be zero here, but in Ontario and in British Columbia, the, their leases and, and their rentals are a big deal. And yeah. Quebec. Yeah. Yeah. So they need to have that portion. No, that, that's that, that's visible only to you. That's your, that's your business. It has nothing to do with. No, but he's asking if he has no leasing production. It doesn't show leasing production. I'm talking, no. We're talking about residential leasing, renting, right? We're not talking about commercial leasing right now. Are you talking commercial? Yes. Yeah, you're totally different. elsewhere. No, no. Yeah. I said you're totally elsewhere. No, 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 no. That's okay. Yeah. No, you could do your commercial in here as well. All right. Okay. Commercial will be a little bit different once they set it up for commercial, but yeah, you you're in a select group, so you're going to have a different look, a little bit different look and feel. But you'll be able to see what someone will be able to find you as a commercial agent in this area if that's what you do. But if I'm a commercial agent, I can use this same way. A deal is a deal, right? It's just that when you look at your worksheet, your net net, and all of these things that don't relate to residential, those are more on forms. So you're going to fill your forms, load your forms here. Okay? Five, okay, that's the vocabulary here. We have five phases. Those five phases are identical for 200,000 agents. You cannot modify those. We have to have a system base on which we can, you know, sit to analyze and understand the data. Within each one of those phases, 
we, we have what we call stages. So when you get an appointment, what do you do? You prepare a listing presentation, you go and take a picture of the house, you get comparables, you do this, you do that. So there could be different stages or a checklist that apply for that stage. Within each one of those phases, the stages are yours to build any which way you want. Now, we understand that in order to get potential income and probable income, there has to be a percentage increase as the file goes through the ladder, right? That's why we call it a sales pipeline. As it moves, the potential of income increases. Until it closes, then we get the money. So how do you do that? You click on any one of those, and then you could say, edit stages. Here I have four stages. You may, you may want to have two. Somebody else may want to have five. It's for you to decide how you manage your business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit stage, and here they are. I can move them around. I can rename it, rename them. I can delete them. I can change the, the uh, probability of income. So I'd say, okay, here it's 18% uh, that's going to come in, etc. So it's for me to build them. Okay, so far so good. So now I'm going to have, uh, okay, so I have cultivate. Then suddenly, oh, I have an appointment with that person. I'm going to do my listing presentation. So what I would be doing from my, pi from my pipeline, uh, from my pipeline here, I'm going too fast. You are going too fast. So in Cultivate here, I have one file, two stages, monthly or hot. If there's a monthly, I'm going to make sure I send them a monthly email. If they're hot, I should be in their face more often, right? I should be sending them stuff, whatever. But if this person now suddenly goes to appointment, all I have to do is drag and drop an appointment, and boom, that file is now in appointment. And the percentage of uh, probability of income will have been adjusted, and my total numbers will have been adjusted as well on my sales pipeline. Automatically. Automatically. Yeah. Now, something interesting to notice here is 0, 2, 3, 0, 3. Oop, here's there's only one, and here there's two. Those are checklists. Okay? What do I do when I do have to do a listing presentation? So you build a checklist for that. Could be a two items, could be a 20 items, could be a 50 items checklist, right? Where do we build that? Again, when we edit the stages, here you have the checklist. This is a generic checklist that will be applied to any file that you drag and drop into to be scheduled. Once the file is dropped there, it will inherit that checklist. Then your, your admin, or your assistant, or yourself, you're going, you're going to have to go to that checklist and say, done, done, done. You get, my, you get what I'm saying? Okay. You guys want to have an idea of kind of checklist we can build in here? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's been working yeah, for a while. Yeah, are you like, now I see some happy dancers, yay! Let me <laughs> show you. some smiling faces in here. Yes. You see, the cultivate phase, the appointment phase, that person has one, two, three uh, stages within that phase. Okay, and the checklist is here. Agent, add appointment, uh, Google Calendar, uh, add appointment. Admin, create loop, dot loop. You guys know dot loop, right? So create a loop and listing packet. So those are the checklists. So this is a checklist that a so person- So this is a checklist for a listing. This is a sample that we got from a team working out of Austin. So they kind of donated this to us. Um, but there's a number of these on KW Connect for different stages, different ideas. You can search and find more documents like this on KW Connect, and the people are sharing them like crazy. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but if you have a checklist already, you can actually incorporate that into any of these phases. And then when you click and drag and drop into another stage, it'll adopt the next checklist. But if it falls apart there and you don't get the listing appointment at that point time, you can move it backwards 
and it'll readopt the initial checklist that was in there in that phase. So yeah. it, they've thought of as much as they could possibly think of. The rest is now up to you. It's how you do your business that will matter, and you're going to set that up in your stages and put your checklist in there. Okay, so this section again is under. So this is my sales pipeline. The handshake. Okay. What I want you guys to do, I want, I want you to try it. I want you to taste it. So you're going to click create opportunity. I want you to know that it takes about just a few seconds to create an opportunity. What do you mean go straight to the point? I am straight to the point. Oh, to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. If you don't use this phase, if you don't use this phase, you know what? Don't use it. That's it. Right? Cultivate was not there before. It was a four conversation. Whatever you do, when you they've added it after. Appointment. It's up to you how you want that okay. to look. So the flow of your business. You're going to make it look like you want okay. it to look in there. So. Does that make sense? You want to do it together? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to create an appointment. Create an appointment. You're there. You're there. Okay. Is he a lead? Or is he a contact? Well, I'm doing the listing on Saturday. Okay. Oh, it has to be. You cannot have an opportunity on nobody. You have to have it in the database first. This is the flow of work. Yeah. So do you have any contact in your database? So. Okay, type A or B or whatever. And for all the opportunities, for everything else you're going to do. But then you're going to create opportunities. We need, okay. We're going to show you how to do that. We'll go to custom tags after. Create opportunities with your estimated closing date? So these are just the natural steps. Okay, when you create, when you create an opportunity, Especially a listing or okay, buyer's or a opportunity. Or for a buyer. It's always like a, okay, okay I'm going to have an appointment with that. I think that right. listing is going to be about $600,000. Yeah. So you don't know if it's going to end up being $600,000, but your guess, by your knowledge, knowledge of the market, it's going to be six hundred. That's the number you're going to put in. It's like a budget a number, buyer that you want to right? So you pick Once you sign that listing agreement and you load it on the MLS, you're going to come back and just adjust that number to the actual listing price. Okay. So, thirty first. Put the thirty first there. Yeah. There you go. Uh, what's your ex? So I guess I'm going to have six hundred thousand. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's your commission rate? Not from here, but from opportunity. My side, or the commission for it's the, the listing. listing. Five percent, but I won't get all of it. You won't get. So put what you're gonna get, because otherwise it's gonna skew your number. You're gonna say, well, I have twice as much money coming in as you really should, right? Which phase? So appointment. Yeah, I have appointment Saturday. I'm writing it. Create. Done. Your opportunity has been created. It took how long? A minute. A minute. Not even a minute. When we go back, it makes sense to go through all of our listings that we currently have. Bingo. Bingo. So I had a good question here. When we go back, is it worthwhile to put all, all, create an opportunity for each listing we have? Yes. You're damn right. Yeah. And for each one of the buyers you're working with right now. So for, for each, each one, one of, one of leases, your, first you want to actually enter your listing contact people. And then create an opportunity with them that you have their house listed and the date that you listed. Because now you're going to have visibility on your business all the time. All the time. And if you're the rainmaker, each one of your team member will build their own. And then at the top, you're going to have Jill. Uh, we're going to, you're going to have your name, all opportunities. And you're going to be able to select each one of your team member and see how they're doing. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yes. Under under yours, yeah. She would assign. Yeah, because you saw when you created the opportunity at the bottom. There was a thing there for assign. For assignee, so you can assign it. Yeah. Okay. So you can just edit this. There. 
go. And uh, where do we assign it? Is mm -hmm. that bottom? No. Is that there? It is somewhere. I just don't know. There it is. Assigning. Assigning. Okay. So you can assign it to somebody else as well. Yeah. Start typing the name and it's going to show up. Okay. We're adding tag. All yeah. right. Guys? Yep. Add admin like. One, admin. two, three. Shh. Okay, stay with me. You should have created an opportunity. It takes just a few seconds. I don't seconds. know that you can actually do now, it yet, but you You want to see some see magic going on? Number one. In every single of your files, you have what we call a document section. This is where you're going to load your documents for compliance. All your listing agreement, your FinTrack documents, everything. You even have, and here's the good news, document at the bottom here, you could create a folder or a folder structure for that deal where you can load unlimited, unlimited number of documents, any document types of any size. You do a virtual tour of your property that, that weighs uh, 17 gigs, you put it there. It's not like Don Lu. This is your private storage, unlimited. Better than Dropbox, because even Dropbox, as you grow, it costs you more money. Here, it costs you nothing. It sure does. <laughs> Just hit the document. Oh, the production is, is, is better than you could ever have in your home. Okay. Better. So if your home gets cut fire, you lose everything. We have triple backup. Oh, you have iCloud, so, so what do you think we have? <laughs> yeah. So when you load a document in, in, in command, it replicates in three different locations insta and instantaneously. And we, have every we use what we call system. object storage. Absolutely. Ah. Our backup system will be With over 200,000 agents, again. if we didn't have redundancy and the system crashes, might as well put the key in the door. Done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Once the I'll documents are I'll in, how do you I'll share them there. with another relative? I'll get there. Isn't, we're actually going okay. to cover that. Yeah. Of course you are. Yes, this is going to include deal You see the submit everything. to market center here? Oh, okay. So right. your market center, your MCA, when she's back from vacation next week, she's going to set this up here. And in here, for listed, under contract, and close, you're going to see a structure of required and optionally required documents. Like listing agreement is going to come here. FinTrack ID is going to come here. Uh, disclosure, they're all going to show up. And when you're going to load those documents, you're going to load those documents as the listing agreement. You're going to load the document as the FinTrack. So that's going to check this off. Your MCA has access to here. And she can open those documents, valid, approve, or reject. Approve, reject. Reject was the reason. Boom. So she doesn't have to go. You don't have. You don't have to share loops or whatever. She's in the same system. So what it's going to be a transition. So yeah, but what we're signing because right now okay. everything that I do is in the list. My documents stay in the list. That's where file, sign, and share. That is all right. There. So, so you all going to have as of September first. You will all have a free DocuSign account. So it's going to be free. You get, we are, as of September 15th, it's out. It's out. You know why? You know how much it cost? $14 million last year. And we sent that $14 million to Dot Loop. And who owns Dot Loop? Zillow. And who is Zillow? It's the beast that wants to eat you alive. So we're not going to feed the beast. It's ridiculous. DocuSign is only in the, in the signature business, and that's all they do. They're not in real, they don't do real estate. Okay, but Dot Loop is going to actually load a bunch of our stuff for us. It's going, they're going to migrate a bunch of our stuff for all us. Of your, say, all of your historical that, data. All of your history is yeah. going to be it's, all put It's going to be available. Any okay. loop that you have, right. 
any loop that you have in flight. Okay, you guys have to listen so you understand how this works because it's really important. This stuff goes away September 15th. It's done. So if you have any in flight loops as of September 15th, when they close, they're going to be available. They're going to remain. But September 16th, at one minute in the morning, you will no longer be able to create a loop unless you sign up for a paid subscription, which is $85 a year, I believe. US, right? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. But here, what you're going to see here is go to transaction. When you click this, it's going to link your DocuSign account, and they call that they call those rooms instead of loops. But it's the same process. Very, very similar. Right? You're going to like the user experience. You're not going to like the user experience. You will, you will. It's a human thing, right? So the one behind you after it's that you. Yeah, yes. but we don't all drive Model Ts anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a cell phone that's this big hanging from my back pocket. So we don't necessarily like change for some things that we get stubborn and stuck in the mud for. But believe me, I'm glad I have a dishwasher in my kitchen, <laughs> and I'm glad I have a microwave, because those make my life easier, and I'll adopt those in a heartbeat. So you guys adopt this technology, and you will be the happiest people on the planet. Yeah. So your question? Yay! Yeah. Are we only going to use It's a little bit. It's a little bit tricky. I don't have the hundred percent of the of the answer for you. For sure, when your market center administrator, because your MC has a third tab here called Cloud More. And when she goes there, she can enable DocuSign for the whole market center, which will allow you to create your accounts. For as long as that's not on, you can't. So she's going to turn that on soon. September 1, that September should become one. available. She's going to turn it on. For DocuSign. So when you create a DocuSign account from command, it will need an email address. Unfortunately, you already have a DocuSign account with that email address. You need to pick up the phone, call DocuSign, and they're going to transfer that email address to your KW profile. Then they're going to be linked. OK, all of the history, that part I don't know. But it should still be there. September 1st or 2nd or 3rd. So when will they be able to actually upload documents, or can you upload documents now? now. Okay. That Good. that's that uh, that works now. You you can actually upload documents right now. Yes, you can. Personally. Excellent! Wow, that goes fast. It will not. Most likely, and I I, I was trying it yesterday. I couldn't upload the document. And the only reason I can think of is because the MCA has not built anything. Okay, so the, the parameters MCA haven't been set here. There's some setup that's required by your market center at the market center level first. This only became available a week ago for them, and they were all at MegaCamp. And now your market center administrator here is on a holidays, and actually there's a few of them that are. So once they get back and get in here, they'll set that up before September one, and it will, and they should let you know when it's active. Okay. That, to the MCA or the compliance officer. So it, it, when you do when you do submit. That means it, it means that you're actually sharing the loop. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> that would be a question for for them to answer. Yeah. yeah. Most likely, you're gonna have one compliance officer for the whole, and maybe maybe Jonathan. Uh, hey, 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 thumbs up. You don't even know what I'm going to ask you. Hey, hey, he's saying yes. Oh, that's scary. So what about the compliance officer? Is the compliance, do you have a compliance officer? Okay, it's Amanda. Okay. Is she, is she going to do the documents for all market and business centers? She will. 
The same way you do, we do with Dalu. So it will be the same the, thing. In the rooms in DocuSign is where the signatures are, are done. Yes. Yeah, I understand that. But, like, are we going to have to take it from DocuSign and put it in here? And yes. Oh, really? No, 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 but they're connected. They're connected. Okay. They're connected. All right. So you just click, click this one here, and you're going to have to move them there. That's phase one. Further down the road, it's going to move automatically. Okay. But they have to get started somewhere. Yeah. Right? And all of this happened really fast because dot loop contract ends September 15th, Playster ends October 1st. We didn't want to renew those contracts because there's a lot of money at stake and also a lot of data. Right. Okay. Your data wasn't protected from many other sources and they wouldn't agree to the data code of conduct that Keller Williams has that says your data is your data and yours alone and you can take it with you anytime you want. Gary won't do business with anybody that says otherwise. So he wants to protect his agents at the highest level. So that's why they stopped the agreement with Dot Loop. Because so they, would, they wouldn't agree oops, with those things. Sorry. You have a listing opportunity in here? You got an offer? You have to you have your offer on hand? So what are you going to do? You're going to click offers. You're going to click add an offer. You did that? Amazing. So you see, I got an offer. I added the offer. I got a second offer. Does that happen to you? Multiple offers? I added the second offer there. And it, the time it takes to add an offer it takes about as long, uh, as much time as an opportunity. <laughs> it doesn't take, because you don't put all of the information. You put the, the buyers, uh, the buyer information, the outside broker information, how much they're given for a deposit, cash, finance, boom. That's about your, and then your pros and cons. So it took me about 30 seconds to put that in, another 30 seconds, Let, let's do a minute, a minute each. Now once the two offers are in here, what can I do? Are you guys reading this screen properly? Oh, I have a select all here. Oh, I have a compare offers button here. Does that mean something? Let's try it. So I'm going to have a select all my offers, compare offers. Oh, wow, I have a nice table side by side. Oh, I can email this to my client. And I can attach the documents, my offers to it. Send it to him. Wait five minutes. Pick up the phone. Give him a call and chat about it. No more driving. No more whatever. Now they have it side by side. The, the one thing I didn't show you, I don't know if I should. All right, so where was I? Was it this one? Yeah, I have two offers here. So if I go to my details, when you create an opportunity in the details, you have what we call here a seller's worksheet. There you're going you're gonna to put the mortgage balance, uh, uh, condos fee that, are, that may remain, uh, prorated tax as of a, a specific date. <clears throat> and <clears throat> when you do that, and it says show net on comparison, when I compare my offers, it's going to show the seller how much money he's net to him. The last line. All right, those numbers could vary, you know, once we get to the lawyer or the but it gives them, you know, visibility into what it means. And it comes and reinforce your expert ex uh, opinion, if you have your own opinion on those deals, right? Does that make sense? I was at the Leverage Series in Montreal, and Matthew, who's a rainmaker, he was in the conference room with a big table, and it was loaded with paper. So I knocked on the door and said, Matthew, what the hell are you doing? He says, Jill, we listed a property 24 hours ago, and I have already received 31 offers. <laughs> it's a nightmare. I said, why don't you use command? I couldn't be in a class. I had 31 offers to, to sort <laughs> out because I have to take this and go and present it to my client. That's the law. I have no choice. If he had something like this, he could select all of them, boom, Send it, the client has a report. You could disregard those 30, 30 offers because there's the one here 
and they're offering you 125,000 above ask price. That's what it sold for in 24 hours. She was happy. The seller was really happy, right? She didn't mind paying the commission. <laughs> All right, so that's, is this a big wow? It is pretty, pretty amazing indeed. Now, I'm going to go back to my offers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Out of those two, which one would you accept? Out of those two, which one would you accept? Yeah, I have two offers now, and you're presenting those to me. Which one would you suggest me to, to accept? Probably the second one, right? God, there's $200,000 difference. So I'll accept it. Once I accept it, the commission staff at the top becomes alive. Then you go there, and all the numbers are here. All your numbers. If you want to give to KW Kids, KW Care, uh, all your splits, and it's going to give you in real time, that works, in real time, how close you are to your cap. Will you be able to send to share your document rooms with your lawyers and your mortgage brokers? That, that I don't. I, I, that, that would yet? be a docu sign. Uh, most likely you will. I just I haven't seen in command. That feature we yet. We haven't got quite that far yet, only because we don't have DocuSign hooked up either. So I don't. So know I don't know if it's going to be a DocuSign do. feature or what. Yes, yes. You'll be able. I I think it, as if a it's team, managed and win more, it's managed here. Yeah, I think if as a team member, the question is, uh, will you be able to, as the rainmaker, see everyone's splits and how close they are to actually capping? I believe as a rainmaker, you'll be able to see all of your team's information all the time. Um, only for team, uh, but you won't be able to see anybody else's, and they won't be able to see yours. So, so is there any reason for you not to use this starting today? Even if it's only to keep an eye on your business moving forward and slowly starting to add a little bit to load documents once uh, Amanda does her magic there. I mean, it, 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 or Excel or anything else. No, 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 you can go retroactive. You can go retroactive. Let's say you say, Okay, Jill, I'd like to start this starting January 1st. So you're going to go and start creating your opportunity in there, January 1st, and you could close them all today if you want. That's not matter. And you do, you do. But you, you, you saw how long it took to create an opportunity? It took literally, I mean, if I have 100 listings since the first of the year, it would probably take me about 25, 30 minutes to do it. It's not, it's not a minute each. Is it? It's very simple. Because you don't have to put in all of the detailed information. You just put in, no, it's even, offer are a little bit longer. Opportunity is literally five to 10 seconds each. Yes, we will. Moving forward. We will moving well, forward. We have been doing that sort of by answering them, so as best we can. Okay. Um, what else do we need plus to Plus, I'm reading their here. questions, and I'm trying. That's why I try to cuddle up with you guys when you're talking, because, you know, that way it comes up ac across on the mic. If, um, if okay, the, the question the question from one of the uh, rainmaker in the room was, would it be good if we started to load our stuff retroactively, like from January 1st? And the answer is yes. And okay, what's that going to do? I have a question on that. There's a couple what's of reasons why. Do, okay, there's a couple of reasons why, but what is it going to do to, that will help this, but what about our already year-to-date numbers for our Winmore that's already in here? Is that going to have any impact on that? It should, it should. Yeah. It should what? It should. Well, if you put your listing opportunity and close with your offers and everything, the, your numbers will, will, will jive. Yeah, because okay. your commissions will register, right? 
No, but if it's already in there because they've transmitted it all and it's already in there and it's in their year-to-date numbers and they're in their year-to-date units and now you're telling them to do it again, that per they're doing it within their command. I don't know what, if it will be duplicated. No, nah, that's okay. Thank you. Huh. Yes. In EAD. Okay, you put in all of your transactions, yeah. Not, not that I know of. Not that I know of, unfortunately. And it has nothing to do with the KW site. Uh, it's it's only three months left. Yeah. January. <laughs> what, do <you> mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you well, mean? Well, and though all the anniversary <laughs> dates of all the people who have bought houses no. <laughs> this year that you want to actually put now, their anniversary right? yes. date yeah. in, that would be a really great idea. So, you know, you want to say, okay, this person bought this house on this day, blah, blah, blah. So you might not want to recreate all the opportunities in there, but you do want to actually make some notes on some of those contexts about what happened and when it happened and when their anniversary date was that they moved into their home, um, et cetera, et cetera, so that you get so that you actually have that information because you might not have that from a previous. Yes. So when dot loop transfers from that, I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, you don't know if it's gonna be the perception that I have from the information that I got is that it would be moved automatically from dot loop to command. But it will just be folders. It's not going to be any any information. It's just yeah. going to be the data that they're holding. Yeah. Okay. So how does it going to look? I don't know. But guaranteed 100 percent beyond September 15, you will continue to have access to those documents and, and deals. Is it going to be in that loop? Is it going to be in command? I just don't have that information yet. Okay. But you're not going to lose anything. Guaranteed. Okay. Pretty cool, isn't it? Exciting. Exciting. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. The all opportunities at the top here. Once your opportunity go to close and you and you get paid, I, it's a number of days later, it's going to fall off the dashboard. Because you don't want that to stay there because it's going to fal falsify your numbers. It's going to go to all opportunities. So it's going to outside of your dashboard. And when you click on all opportunities, all your historical data will be there. And over time, you are going to be able to build a report that's going to make you go crazy. Because now I could use filters and I can search historically all my opportunities by from date to date, show me all the lost opportunity between that date range, show me all my buyers, my sellers, whatever, okay? And once it returns the information, it shows you, it's gonna show you a beautiful uh, dashboard here of your search with all the details. So you're gonna have access to all of your data all the time. It's lovely. I wanna compare my the three months last year with this year. How am I doing? They're saying the market is slow. Shit, I have four, uh, 54 more deals, no? I'm joking, of course. <coughs> Any questions on opportunities? All right, so that's one good reason at least. No, it's the fifth or sixth good reason mm -hmm. to start using command. Campaigns, anybody here using Facebook to advertise their, their listing? Google AdWords? Anyone? Yeah? Twitter? Instagram? Okay. Anybody need some new team members? You want to recruit some people and put them on your team? Yeah. Attract some talent? Need a new admin? All kinds of ways to use this marketing material. Do you want to market people that are thinking about moving from Dallas to Moncton? We were talking about that earlier today. You could all do it here. So. What are you going to do? The first thing you're going to do is you see payment, payment methods. The rainmaker is going to have to put the credit card there. That's it. Okay? But you will, will no longer have to have your credit cards on Facebook, on, on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Google AdWords. We are handling the payments. And we are doing all the campaigns at a privileged pricing. 
In Canadian dollars. In Canadian dollars. And we're not keeping any payment processor fees. And it will be paid that. to KWRI marketing, not to Facebook, not to Instagram. So they're going to collect the money on our, on on the behalf of all of them and pay out to them. So we you, don't have to worry about that. You could do all of your ads, all of your ads on any social media, all of your posts right here without ever having to go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or whatever. Okay? And you do that like, e -e -e -e. it's a very easy process. Anyway, for me. Because when I log into Facebook and I try to do it, oh my God. It's a, lear it's a learning process. Pardon me? You don't have to go on Facebook. All you have to do is have a Facebook page. You have to have a Facebook account. All right. So let me show you how we create an ad on Facebook. Both. I go, create new, social ad. Huh? I'm going to go fast, okay? Just to show you. I'm used to it. I'm going to go Facebook. I'm going to give it a name. Test. Set up the campaign. Uh, no. Someone has a listing to share with me. 83. So how do you spell that? Couldn't be Johnson or something like that. <laughs> C O C A G E Sud S U D. Let's try to search that just for fun. There you go. That's in New Brunswick, isn't it? That's a okay. So I have now I have now connected my listing to my Facebook ad. In just one click. Now I'm going to say, okay, if, add copy. You, okay, how do I want to title this? Account. What you see here is the real time review of your ad on Facebook. Okay? Oh, so the house, they all say that, but so of your dreams, right? So you see that, the house of your dreams, right top. Now this is the text that you broker loaded. Do you on matrix that shows up here now you could just change it or retype it any which way you want but it's already there you don't have to retype it again okay now add a destination link what is the destination link it's it would be it's a CTA link like it's a call so it would be what oh that's why I was looking at it what about your website right you advertise a listing. When they click here, they go to your website. So what you would do in here, you would go on your website, go to that property, copy the URL, and you paste it here. The same way you do on Facebook. Same way. Or if you already have created landing pages and either at my end or your end, choose one of my landing pages. That because it's happened before. So in that case, I could do that. I just wanted to choose a landing page. Have this one here. So boom, it's done. Okay. Link description, blah, blah, blah. Good, blah, blah, so blah. fun. All right. <laughs> so learn more is perfect. Get or some no, people in my class in, in the first. So I'm going to use a contact us. Fill it up. And then okay, awesome. I'm to decide the Thank page you. or pages I want to select. So I can select my page that I want to use. And the photos. I'm going to use that one. It's beautiful. Sorry, guys. That I one, forgot. that one, this one, and that one. Now I have a carousel on Facebook. Did I have to upload those photos? No, they're okay. here. They always heard one side of that conversation. All right. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Where's the wow? <laughs> okay. Uh, still no happy dances. I'm so disappointed. Maybe Hello? at the end of the day, we'll do really great big happy dances. All right. Now, it's time to target. I can target my database. <laughs> So if I have something that I want to target my investors, and I have like 500 investors in my database in a closed community, I could target that. It's pretty cool. Or I could create a custom audience. Or where do I want to target? Remember the referral? If I want to target people that are moving, I'm going to target like, uh, I don't know, Dallas, Texas. I'm going to target wherever I want. Vancouver, Calgary, Vancouver. you can actually so select I could select the area. U.S. or Canada. So if I select Canada, uh, let's target Halifax. 
Halifax is there, Nova Scotia. 20 kilometers is the smallest radius. The Can you target more than one area? Uh, the, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. You'd have to do a sec. Uh, it looks like you have to do an individual ad for each area. You yeah. can't just target multiple areas. Okay. So before we used to be able to target male, female, uh, twenty-year-old, whatever. No, I'm joking. But yeah, male, female, and we could go to one kilometer. But because of the Fair Housing Act in the U.S., rules have changed because it was too easy for predators. To, to narrow target specific neighborhood or for discrimination purposes, right? So the rules have changed, not only for us, for everybody who's using Facebook, including Facebook itself, okay? Uh, now, I could start, uh, start searching for, uh, I wanna grow my team. So let's say I do, I'm doing a brand awareness or attract talent. I'm looking for a real estate agent. So I can target by real estate agent. It's gonna pop up. Oh yeah, real estate broker, real estate development, real estate agent directory, boom. I'm gonna target those only. So I can really micro-target specific people. I'm looking for people that, are, that have set in their profile moving interest. They're about to move. That exists. Or you could browse, uh, See where is the browse? The browse here. So that's going to take you to the Facebook micro targeting of interest and demographics uh, key lines, if you want. Budget iteration. Uh, let's say I uh, have thirty-five dollars. So it's going to be thirty-five dollars. Boom. Save and activate. Thirty-five dollars is going to be taken off your credit card right away. It's going to be put in the bank. It's not going to be sent to Facebook. It's going to be kept here. And as you use on Facebook, then we're paying Facebook. So if tomorrow you come back and say, nah, I want to halt this post, this ad, you halt it, you have uh, $34.50 remaining in your account. Well, the house might sell in one day, and then you want to halt it and use it those funds for something else. You don't want to spend that money. So when, I do, when, I do, when I do save and activate here, and let's say I had selected Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, right? When I click save and activate, then the Instagram process is going to show up. When I'm done, then the Twitter process is going to show up. Very easy. Always in the same place. My, my uh, listing already connected. I don't have to repeat those steps. Your database, your command database. Targets your command database. It knows them. It knows them. It knows them. Yeah, it's, it finds them by their name yeah. within. No, yeah. and oh, of course, if you have 200 names in your database and you're doing it 100 kilometers radius in Montreal, I mean, forget it. Facebook's going to tell you impossible. You have to have more. Either more people or narrow your, 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 your target. Otherwise, it won't work. Does it make sense? OK. Can you, That's cool. Can you see yourself using it and how much easier it would be than going actually on to Facebook on I would on start Instagram? using it like today. And does it show like a, that it was posted by you, like the announcement you posted? It would show the same thing as it shows on Facebook. Yeah. Because like, you know, you can use like, um, those ones that you can schedule your posts and stuff. Like, a post is a post. An ad is an ad. All right? So, so the question was, uh, would it show who posted it? But a post is different from an ad, right? So let's say I'm going to save as draft here because I don't want to spend money. And an ad can only go on your business page. A post can go anywhere you tell it to go. Right. So but by example here, I can create new social posts. Now I'm going to create a Twitter post or a Facebook post, and I could create a year in advance of my posts, all queued up, all in advance. So I have my marketing person that's going to do all that, you know, those posts in advance, boom, ready to go. 
when, when the date comes, boom, out it goes automatically. Very easy to do. And so you if you, never those have of you that have custom team branding and you want to just get your face out there, you can set this up to just go out and do this all the time. Or you want a, uh, let's say back to social posts, I could create a, an email campaign. I want to create a direct mail. It doesn't work in Canada. Yet. That's the only thing that doesn't work here. Ah, uh, guys, I, it happens. If you want to do direct mail, you want to have a little good tip for you? Go on Canada Post and use Snap and Mail. You guys know Snap and Mail? That is exactly what we are going to integrate here for Canada. Okay, so you're going to go here to your design. You're going to create your, your design, your template. Then you're going to log into, you're going to say direct mail. You're going to put in the uh, property address. It's going to show you the Canada Post postal routes. Then you'll be able to filter down and say, show me the properties that have not been sold in the last five years, that have a family, with kids, da, 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 da. It's going to show you, okay, 150 doors. It's going to cost you about $150. Upload your design. Click pay. Done. Your job is done. It's going to be printed and delivered. So you don't have to go run after a printer, go and get it, go to the post office and do all that crap. It's, all, it's a fulfillment service. That is what Snap Ad Mail is. And that is what we are integrating directly into command. Okay? That same company that does Snap Ad Mail, just to make you a little bit sad, they also cover all of the U.S. Postal Service in the States and uh, Home Depot and Amazon. And in the U.S., once you, you have determined your targeting area, you have two options, direct mail or digital mail, because they have all the email addresses of people living there. But we cannot do that in Canada. They have those email addresses. They have that, but we cannot do that here. Sad, because it would cost a lot less, right? Now, once your campaign is done, we recapture all of the analytics, all of the results, all of the stats. So when I go back to my campaigns here, it's going to tell me you have used one channel, two channels, three channels. And when I click on this little arrow, it's going to show me each channel, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and with the results of each one. Now I know where my marketing dollars are paying off, which is great. So over time, you're going to have a better feeling about where, how you should invest your money for your marketing. Also, with the AI, they're, they're collecting all of this data from all of our Keller Williams agents, and actually eventually it'll tell you with this kind of house we found that this ad works better in this kind of a market than this ad does so we'll we're going to recommend this one you use this one and so you get to choose whether you want to or not but it actually is giving you statistics on the success based on all of the all of the intelligence that all of the statistics that they're gathering so it's pretty okay. cool it's really going to work any, for our benefit in the future any questions on that all right just Guys, you, you just have to go and get and use it. Because when I do create new here, just so you know, and I click social ad, let's say advertise listing, attract listing, these five different categories, the targeting has been maximized between behind each one of them by the Facebook engineers and our engineers. So you don't have to go on Facebook and boost. It's already pre-boosted. The targeting works like amazingly, right? And I, I was a, a, a witness of that in a class in Vancouver where in the morning, Phil Legree, our friend Phil, had posted one of his listings on Facebook and right after lunch, he had already 30 clicks on it. So Facebook is targeting the right people to get those 30 clicks, right? $12 million listing, I mean, yeah. All right, so go and get it and use it and abuse it and have fun, right? Reports, I want you guys to click on the, that button. Click on the report button. 
time to shine or not. <laughs> All right. So that's going to give you the health of your database. My database is not healthy, and I don't care because I'm not a real estate agent, guys. Your database should be healthy, like it should be green. I have 98% of my contacts have emails. Ha ha. I'm sure I'm better than you guys, right? Who has more than 70% here in addresses? Well, I, as long as you have more than five contacts in your database. Yeah, well, they might only have one, the one they uh, entered today. <laughs> okay, uh, phone number, that should be pretty high too. In your opinion, which one of those categories should be like to the top? Eh? Address. Uh, email, yes, definitely, because that's the way you need to connect. Phone number, email, address, birthday, home anniversary. To me, in my opinion, if you want to have a solid database to nurture, they should be all. That's, there's a reason why they're there. So you want to compare yourself to everybody else? Hit the compare button. Just go ahead and do it. Hit the compare button. Now, I'm comparing with agents in my market center. Real estate agents aren't competitive. They don't need to compare themselves to anybody. Okay. <laughs> Look at all those smiles. Now there. you can compare. <laughs> you can compare with agents in my state slash province. Okay, guys. Uh, all agents or agents in production brackets above me. How is their database compared to mine? So what do I need to do in order to get there? So let's take all agents because there's a stat here I, wanna, I was blown away this morning. First of all, when we first introduced contacts, overnight there were about 4 million contacts loaded in command. That was at Mega Camp, all right, family reunion this year. Only to find out that 4% of, uh, of all contacts actually contain addresses. When, when, when Gary oh, Keller walked on stage the next day, he says, hey, guys, I don't understand you. You guys that are in real estate, you don't know where your, people, where your clients live. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? So it's 25% now. But it's 25% now, so it moved up a whole lot. How do you score here? Okay. But look at this here. Home anniversary, 1% of all agents have actually indicated their home anniversary. Don't you guys send your clients, hey, it's been a year, right? I'm here. <laughs> How are things going, right? Is your sister planning to move or whatever? I don't know. I'd love You're to special. be a real estate agent. I'd love it. Birthdays, 7%. Hey, way to go. She just made a post. All right. It did. There you go. Yay. Yeah. Good job. True command. Uh-huh. A post, not an ad. No, post. An, it's a post. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. You know, just playing around with their new technology. Awesome. Yeah. From our CRM to all the KW Google polls. That was something that's been pretty kind of great. That's cool. Excellent. All right. I feel like so me, I would try to crank those buttons up, 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 up as much as possible. Gary Keller said it, and I believe it because I was, I've built and sold two successful businesses. I was in charge of business dev, and I can tell you, if you have a solid database and you nurture it in your follow-ups, money is coming your way that you want it or not. It's going to show up, right? But you have to have it, you have to have it solid. You cannot always go on the go and generate leads. Leads are cold call, right? They're not repeat business yet. But you know what? If you're my real estate agent and you're good with me, if I buy and sell four times in my life, chances are I'm, it might be with you. You might have to say it twice. And you know what? I'm not going to cost you a red cent to, to maintain the relationship. All you need is a phone call or a text or an email once in a while. You don't have to pay extra money to get me. I'm already in your database, right? So monitor this. It's interesting. How do I, how do I compare with, with you know? Everything with you do, every time you update a contact, every time you add a neighborhood, every time you add an address, a birthday, anything, you're going to increase 
the chances of you making more money and being able to utilize your database at a higher level. So if you can commit to doing five of these a day or 10 of these a day, you guys, it's just going to put more money in your pocket. Okay. Are we ready for another big wow or do you have another question? Go ahead. Oh, the test we were trying, you, you and I? Earlier you oh. were trying to put dates in where? Neighborhoods in. Oh, okay. I would do a couple of tests, additional tests, and then if, if the uh, bug persists, then I would contact uh, support because okay, it works. No, not the all the neighborhoods are there. Well, okay, here's Well, so you might be thing. able to send out a, a, a more general one, but then they can draw on it as yeah. well, or they can pick we, a neighborhood. You can pick an area. They can actually draw and pick a uh, We have a the spot listings. On the map. We have all the listings. We know where they are. They, all, they are all geolocalized. So if you draw the, you know, by hand on the map as a consumer, it's going to show the listings in that, within that area. It's it, it just we don't have the boundaries for those neighborhoods. We don't have them. Not yet. You tried this morning. You asked the question this morning. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know. Okay, ready for another big wow? You're going to follow me. You're going to hit design. Okay, you see that? Hit design. Don't go faster than me. Some will go slower, I know. You're going to hit the plus sign at the bottom at the bottom right. You're going to hit social. And you're going to create template. You're going to close that screen. And that should appear. What do you want to do? You want to create a design the one for house for sale, just listed, open house, first, just sold, local expert, whatever. Well okay. We have, we have close to a thousand amazingly built templates already set for you guys. So, that's, which one do you want me to pick? Open house? Or just so, just so. Just listed, there you go. What do you want to do it for? Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories, LinkedIn, Twitter. They're all formatted to perfection. So let's go Facebook. And I want to use that template. Okay. Now you're going to go crazy. I'm telling you, you're going to go crazy. Okay. So. Now I can select a listing from KWLS. There is something broken right now. Our Canadian listings are not showing up here. They are in the database, but it's a matter of days. Okay, when you click here, your listing is going to show up. It's in the database. You can upload your logos, your icon, your text, images. Okay, we're going to wait for you guys because... Okay. So let me show you how it's going to look when your listings will all be linked. I'm going to go on KWLS. I'm going to search for uh, 23 Washington. I'm just putting in a name. I, I don't even know if there's something here. Yeah, here you go. You're going to see your listing. You're going to select it. All your photos are going to show up. And I want to replace that photo. I drag and drop, and that's done. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> now I can change this. I can change that. The font, the size, the color. Are they we already have about 800 there. Yeah, but it depends category. I mean, you've got a whole lot of categories. So if you look for sale, you've got a whole bunch. We're adding like 10 to 20 new ones every week. The marketing department is on it. They are adding more all the time. Daily, new ones come yes. in. Yes. 
Oh, shh. Uh, well, you could use campus. any one of them and scrap it all and change it over, and you, yeah. you can. Now, watch this. So, I have, do you guys have images on Facebook? On your Facebook pages, you know, your business pages, you have photos there, right? Yeah. That you'd like to reuse, you know, to have consistency all over your branding. So, do that. Go to image. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I just said that. The Canadian, there's a link broken for the Canadian listing. They know the bug. They know exactly what it is. They're working on it to fix it. That's correct. Your listing will be in there. Okay. But your photos, question for you, where are your listing photos? Well, MLS? Sure. What? Before they were on MLS, where were they? Then it would be it would be a challenge. But it's just a matter of days. I mean, they know exactly what the problem is. Okay? We I we had the same we had the same problem in the Facebook uh, three weeks ago and they changed something and they broke that one. All right? But so basically the, the our listings will show up oh yes. and all mm -hmm. their pictures will be there, they're just They do. Correct. They do. The problem is that if you put in your address there, it's it, you're going to have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll because they're all the way at the bottom for some reason. It's the, the result of the sort that's coming out, it's not doing it in the right order. All right? So I want you to click on images at the top, add, and now you can, you can add all your photos from your Facebook, Facebook pages, Instagram, Google Drive, Dropbox. So all the photos that you have, so if you have a huge Dropbox, it's going to show you all your folders in a click. It's going to show you all the photos in that folder, etc. So now you can start building a library of photos in here. Same thing for text, icons, logos. So Terry, to answer your question, you could have them all in Dropbox right now and you would be able to still access them all here or Google Drive. So are they on Drive or Dropbox? Or okay. okay. But I, I'd say you wait until no. you wait a few days. You wait a few days. A few days, days, it'll be fixed. Yeah. 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 Right. So, if, for example, if I click Facebook, what do you think is going to happen? Magic. Your, pr your pretty face is going to show up. Boom! All my photos are showing up. So if I do Facebook page. I don't think I have it. I have nothing there. Boo. Boo. I don't have a favorite. I have a business page, but it's empty. There's nothing. I keep remind I keep getting reminders from Facebook, do something about it. Do something. I do nothing. Um, I could say, all right, Instagram or Google Drive. Or you could select them from your hard drive as well. Right? So you have, if you have a folder for that property on your hard drive. You can go and click on it, and it'll bring in all the photos. Guys, that's a lot. So far, I've showed you quite a lot of stuff, right? Uh, I was going to ask you, how much are you willing to pay me for that on a monthly basis? <laughs> how much is this going to cost you? Nothing. Nothing. Isn't that crazy? Are you guys going to find something like this? This is six months old. Can you imagine in a year where this is going to be? What we have accomplished in six months? If you don't start using command today, a year from now, you're going to be behind a eight ball. You're going to be trading. And other agents in your office will have mastered command, and they will just swipe the market. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a game changer, right? If it's not to compete amongst you, at least go and get Remax a real good one.
You have my blessing for that. <laughs> go, ca go take your unfair share of the market. Go for it. So, fonts, colors, yes. size. There's a text button up there. So, I could select this and change it to blue, or I can uh, even say, go and pick a color. I want to have that color here. So, I mean, this is, you know, standard stuff. Once I'm satisfied, I can save it, and then I can continue to work on it, save it again, continue to work on it, save it again. You know what? I prefer the one two saves ago. I just go and click on the on the back time up there, and it shows me all, this, all the ones that I saved, and I can revert back to the one I like. So I'm not losing my work along my way. It's crazy. Now, let's say your template is done. It's beautiful. You love it. You want to get it, send it to your printer to be printed, or you want to, because once you create this here, you're actually creating a landing page as well. This is mental torture. I'm telling you, there's so much you can do. I can download it, publish settings. I can have the bleeds for the printer. So the printer has a professional file from printing. Or I could say, uh, I want to share it. I want to share it right away on Facebook. I can share it here, from here on Facebook. You're going like this. It's, it's, it's getting too much, right? <laughs> Told you the fun stuff was going to come this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So go in and, and have fun with design. Once, you're, once you save your templates, they come here. This is my library. All of the templates that I've updated and saved are here. I can use them, edit them. They're mine now. Nobody else can touch it. I can do whatever I want. Right? The same way, while I'm here, if I hit new, okay, I want to make you blind. <laughs> I'm going to create a landing page in the, just a couple of seconds. You'll be able to do the same thing. So I click plus. Where do I hit? Landing page. Create template. Uh, watch this. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to configure it if I want to. I'd say, okay, I don't want to say interested, let's talk, it's call me, right? Save and apply, publish my landing page. Yes, publish, I'm done. And I'll have a landing page. It created a, a link here that I can copy, and then I can push that on Facebook in the URL where I want to drive people, or I can take this link, and for those who are uh, using websites that they can customize. If you have an ad on your website, and at the bottom you have click here to register, you can hide this link behind the button. When they click on it, they go on your landing page. They enter their name. It's going to generate a lead. It's going to create a lead in command. And Kelly's going to tell you you have a beautiful lead that just came in. A lot of people have been using their own Correct. Absolutely. You can do that. So that they capture everybody that walks in their door. Yeah, because you could have that on an iPad, right? And people, so let me click on this. All right, the widget's not configured. That's what it tells me. But once it's configured, you put your first, so you have that on an iPad. First name, last name, boom, boom, boom. This is in French because my, bother, my browser is in French. Once you click that, the submit button's going to show up. Boom, submit. That goes to your command. And it's going to show you that the lead comes from a landing page. Well, you can tell that he's actually a technical person because this isn't very pretty. It's not sexy as he I, likes to on, say in now, French. Come on now, come on now. Don't start. You can, <laughs> you can make it pretty. You can make it attractive. You can put your brand on there, your name, your face. You can do whatever you like want. Like this. There. See how fast that So I'm not, I'm not just techie. <laughs> You're not just another pretty face. Okay. All right. <laughs> so... Um, like I was saying, I would say he registered here to get your neighborhood information, right? So I would display something on Facebook. I, I, I would love to be a real estate agent if I had time, right? 
I would push an ad on Facebook with a snapshot of a, of a neighborhood. Okay, if you, wanna, if you wanna have information on your neighborhood, click here to register. People are curious. They wanna see that. So they would click, right? they would put their information there, they would create a lead, and the first thing you wanna do is send them a thank you note, blah, 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 blah. Okay, which neighborhood do you wanna look at? Okay, that one, that one, that one. Because then you get in touch with them, right? It's no longer a lead, now they become a, a contact. But you're actually interested in them. You're, you're creating a conversation. You're interested in about what they want to know about. So you're talking to them like they're a human person, not just a digital contact. So, so do you want to know, do you want to see how I did that? Okay. It took me a couple seconds more. So what I basically did, uh, I went to Can you adjust the landing design. page that's already there? Can you edit one? Of course. Of course. Okay. Landing page, create template. I have a bunch of widgets here. So agent branding, up there. Lead form, down here, done. Remember what we were doing this morning, setting up that branding, setting done. up that platform? That's why you do that, so that you can use that wherever you want. Oh, I wanna have a market snap. Market snap, boom, done. So at the bottom, I'm gonna have a market snap. So now what I have to do is configure the widgets. When I go to my market snap, what's the postal code? Give me a postal code. What? Oof, too fast. E2K. E2K. What else? Uh, uh, let's try. Let's try that. Let's try that. So. Okay. No, 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 no. That's the, the error message is wrong. So give me a full. Uh, E2K. Yeah. Five M one. Nancy. Brad. Eastmel, Indiana Town. Portland, that's doesn't work. It's still all. It should work. It should work. Uh, <coughs> now it still shows me the same thing. So maybe there's no neighborhood in that part of town. So I don't B three M one T nine. North and Halifax. Ha ha. There you go. Okay, Rockingham then. There it is. All right. Save and apply. Save and apply. So now I see that. And I see the active listings and everything. So now I have my header register. I could have this and then the other one. But it's just widgets. So I just drag and drop, configure the widgets, and done. So you, you could create unlimited. Landing pages. Now, once I am in my landing Look pages. Look at that pretty little note at the bottom. It tells you everything anyway. Once you're happy with the layout, you can tailor your widgets by clicking Configure Widgets. Yeah. So I'm going to save it as a template. There it is. Now I can go to my landing pages database and see my landing pages versus my contact landing pages. What would be a landing page associated to a contact? That was the question. Right? Yes, or the neighborhood setup you've done for them. So when you add a neighborhood to them and then you uh, put them on a smart plan, you've created a, a landing page. So for each one of those contacts, here's a landing page. Here's what's interesting now. I can edit that landing page. Uh, is it here? Two, 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 two. No, I cannot edit it that way. My landing pages can be edited because I can change a URL. So I can change this here and call it uh, Laura A L Y. Have I just customized that beautiful URL for her? So not only can you can you say I'm going to send you a landing page, I created a customized <laughs> website for you, but it has your name on it. <laughs> I I love this kind of stuff. Okay, the other thing because now happens, I'm getting connected. I'm getting connected. At this, when you this send out a neighborhood to your customer, to your client, every time they click on it, every time they change something, everything they do on that landing page for the eternity of them having it gets logged onto their contact information. 
it will come up and show you that they've actually interacted with your page when, what listings they clicked on. You will know if they can't go there every day that all of a sudden they're becoming a kind of a hot prospect and you might want to give them a call. Okay, let's look for Moncton, no, Halifax. Let's see if the, they behave over there. We're going to see if agents in Halifax behave. Uh, I don't know that they're behaving over yeah, there. We'll they're, see. They'll probably be lighting up oh, my phone. Oh, hey, that's neat. I don't know about this. Bet, where's Bedford here? It's a little north. bit north. Again? What? Uh, must, must Bedford Pathway? Is that okay. bypass? Right there? Do you there? see the number 213? The number 213? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I preferred, yeah, there were more in other parts. You guys know what insights are? And now that's another 20 bucks, right? <laughs> Do you guys know what insights are? It's a gold mine. It is a gold mine. Again, I wish I was a, a real estate agent. I know. I would walk Pretty my soon community. You are gonna be I, would, I would walk my community, my neighborhoods that I'm farm, and I would build relationship with business people like crazy. Insight is, is, a, is unique to Keller Williams. It is your neighborhood stories of neighborhoods you farm in. So when I go and go to see you and do a listing presentation, what, what is different between me and a Remax guy? Right? We all have the best system and model. We all do push your, your ad on Facebook. and We all do that, right? So we're pretty at the same level. But I have something over you, assuming you're the Remax guy, right? What we have is we have our own database of neighborhood qualitative insight. So when I sell your home, I'm not just putting your home up for sale, I'm putting your, your neighborhood lifestyle. How is it live in that neighborhood? Not just based on Google, right? Because Google is Yelp. I mean, you have all kind of crap there. But based, we have a system. Okay, okay let me give you a little, uh, how is it, scenario here. You own a bakery. You got it from your dad, and he got it from his dad. You've been part of the neighborhood for years. What's your first name again? Rene. Hi, Rene. My name is Jill. Nice to meet you. Right. I, I was walking in front. It smells so good I couldn't resist. So here I am. And I was, I'm thinking about that. You know, I'm Keller Williams agent, right? So we're really, really strong in technology, and we believe in promoting our neighborhoods, not only houses that we sell, but promoting what it is to live in that house within the community. What's out there? What's unique about that community? And I think that your, your business is really unique. It's been here for a long time. It's part of that community. And we have to build a platform where us, the agents, are putting those businesses and those uniqueness about our communities on that platform, which is visible by over 200,000 agents, and there are millions of clients. And I'd like to put you on that platform. No, no, so rest assured, it's free. It's 100% free, right? What does that mean? It means any time that our, any one of our users will use our app to browse around the neighborhood, they'll see your business, and they'll be able to read about it. Anytime I do a listing presentation, because I want people to sell their homes with me, when I do my listing presentation, I'm not just going to show their home, but I'm going to show the neighborhood, what's around them, and your business is going to be on there. Do you mind if I add you on that database? It's free, right? Okay. So I'll go out and take a picture, and maybe I'll take a picture of you inside. Uh, and, oh, and by the way, would you have a little story to share with me? so that I could put that on my, in my insight instead of having to create my own. You might? No? We have a deal? Yeah. Okay. So that will be croissant for life. Thank you so much. <laughs> what have I just done? Now I'm going to have a thoughtful insight, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to put it to good use. When, when our consumers are going to use your app and serve the neighborhood, they're not going to see that the, that the insight was created by you. They're just going to see the neighborhood. Uh, the insight. But we want to have something that makes us different, better, winner, right? So when I list with you, now I know what I get. 
extra for free. And I want to get that. So make relationship with your local dry cleaner and the bakery down the road and your dentist and your hairdresser and because creating those relationships and putting them into your neighborhood stories is going to boost their business and it boosts your business and you get to brag about your whole community. So when anybody looks at that then, whether it's people from our referral network on KW or whether it's other people, they're, they're actually going to be able to see how much of an expert you are in that community. That's a beautiful one. You see nice pictures, it's beautiful, little story about it. That's cool. So that tells people this is how it is to live in that neighborhood. So when you go and do your listing presentation, you saw the widget that I dragged and dropped. That widget was available. They just removed it to fine tune it. They're going to put it back on. So now you're going to have listing presentation as a landing page. You're going to drag and drop the inside widget. But before you do that, you're going to go and select the area where you want to, you want to target. You're going to have the list of all the inside. You're going to pick and choose which one you want to have on your listing presentation. Right? Once they're on your presentation, it doesn't show which agent it comes from. It's anonymous. They think it's you. Right? So if I were you, I would start putting in like the most amazing insights because it's going to be very, very useful very soon. So, yeah. So next day you go there. Right, and you try to do a, an insight, and Kelly or or command's gonna tell you there's already one that exists, and here it is. Do you still want to create your own? Who are we to say no to you? So yeah, you'll be able to create a, a duplicate one with a different story, right? And if, and if if she wants to add insight on her listing presentation, and she sees two of of the same, she's gonna have the ability to the option to choose which one she wants. Right? Now, I love this one. I'm an agent. Only agents see that much detail. Right? I love it. So what am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to vote up for it. So the more votes that are associated with, with a, an insight will be an indication to you that this should be a good insight. So when you choose and pick, it's, it's faster. Now, if, he, if he's thinking of leaving to Oliver Williams, he's mad with Austin, I don't know, something went wrong, and he's pissed off, and he wants to do some, some bad things here. He's, he could create a bunch of insights and start putting horror stories, right? So you're gonna start voting down, vote down, vote down, boom, a red light's gonna go on, go off in Austin, they're gonna take a look, and then they might decide to remove those insights from their database. But we're not vetting every insight that's being created. It would be like, whew, overwhelming. All right. What do you think of that? OK, so how, how hard is it to create an insight? Create a new insight. Uh, is it a place or an area? What's the location? What's the address here? Now you can just I knew. I just wanted to Woodside Lane. It should come up. Fredericton, it's there. So it geolocalized. All I need now is a little a title, a story, and a picture. That's all I need. How difficult. And if you're with Kelly? <laughs> I think insights are easier on Kelly. You're personally. with Kelly. You're in front of the place. You just say, add a new insight, right? Take a picture. <clears throat> it's geolocalized already. Just put in a title, a story. You're done. But don't become Yelp, please. So you can edit your Yelp own exists. insights. You can't edit anyone else's insights, but you can't. You do have the ability to edit your own. So if you put one in there, but you want to actually do more of a story later, you can add that in or add more pictures. <coughs> later. You yeah. can do that also. All right. So that <clears throat> it's not complicated, but it's going to be really useful. Think about it. It's an additional data layer when your your clients are going to surf your app. They're going to see additional information that they will not have anywhere else. So, uh, if the agent puts in his version, you know, Cheryl, 
You will see the insides, but you don't. You won't see that it was Cheryl's inside. No. You'll just see no, it the no, color was Cheryl's details. It's all about Cheryl. Yeah, but that's for you to see. Nobody else. You, all of the agents, the agents that are in command, can see all the details. But once you see the uh, the inside itself uh, in the widget, it's just going to be the title, the photo, and the description. That's it. That I would not select it to go on my listing presentation. You don't want to do that. You want to be professional and they help each other. Be doing we that. want to help each other. That's what we want to do. No, you want to put about whatever it is your 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 so the, the bakery. In, you want to put about the center? dentist. You want to put about the dry cleaner. You don't want so to put about you up So I would suggest her to go in. Unless modify, you're putting your house up there with insights. your little face in it or your office with your little face yeah. in it. but She's going to use it, but nobody else is going to use it, right? Well, but but the thing. <laughs> so the consumer will see this. We'll see the photos and the title, whatever the title was. What is it? Yeah, yeah like Bedford, waterfront, condos, and townhomes. That's what they would see. So where? Like, what do they have to turn in? Like, do they, they, cl they click on one of these? Either on the consumer app. No, here, oh, okay. this is no. command. Okay. On the consumer app, or uh, the insight is going to be added to the neighborhood. Gotcha. That's where, what you're sending to the client. Okay. By all of the neighborhood that we've seen this morning, that data layer is very soon going to you know, go above. So that's why, that's why they're kind of waiting to see the, how the game is going to be played because of those type of things, right? So uh, ideally, you don't put your name in an insight because if you if you put those insight on your listing presentation, the seller is going to think those are your insight anyway. So don't put your name. Don't oversell. It's no good. Any questions? Are you dead bra uh, brain dead? I am. I am. You, you'll forgive me. All right. So, what was the one? Uh, any, uh, any, any ha ha's? Uh -huh. uh -huh. In French, it's ha ha's, and we're all ha ha. -ing. Yeah, in English, it's aha. Uh -huh. In French, it's ha ha. Ha ha. You notice the difference? Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. Opportunities? Oh, yeah. Managing your business, having visibility, yeah. Everything in one spot is amazing. All right. Any concerns? They're not fully developed yet. Yeah. Yeah. But think a year ago, we were a year and a half for, you know, from it. Now we're just a couple well, of months. I was, I was telling yeah. Bo earlier. Well, our data here now comes from Pitney Bowes, and Pitney Bowes is the people who supply the, the postal machines to all the postal, all the offices, right? So that's where we're getting our data right now, but we're going to drill down further in that and get you more specific neighborhood information. It will still be different than your MLSs, but it'll be more accurate to your location. So that is coming. What we want you to do is just get set up so that when every when all these pieces keep getting, they're adding at least a hundred new things a week, at least a hundred parts to this. Well, fixes and yeah. Yeah, okay. so they're doing about sixty fixes you, and about forty new you, things. So you guys are always going to have something new out there. So pretty soon they're going to come and say there is everything is there, and if you're not ready to rock with it, you're never going to know. I was asked a question at lunch. Uh, when will we know when this thing is fixed or that thing is fixed? You won't. You won't. We don't have time to do it. We don't have time to do that. So, well, my suggestion is just go in every day. Just give it a little test. Give it a little Yeah, it works. They are telling well, us when we do the latest in labs every week, they're telling us, uh, they're showing us a bunch of the highlights of what they've done that week and what they've posted and what works and what doesn't. Um, they're actually doing that weekly, and you can go to, yeah. Those are the major ones. They're not going to start shooting out all of the small bugs that they fixed because they could be like multiple. Yeah. They 
They, do they could go on a Facebook group yeah. called um, uh, Command Mastermind. Neil, who's my boss, every week, every Friday or Saturday, he posts everything that has been fixed, everything that has been modified, everything new. All of it. Sometimes it's long like this. I read it all. What's your system? The iGuide. The iGuide. iGuide. Yeah. So for me, I'm just like, okay, I know. So you're going to have to go to CSV and from CSV into yeah, command. Yeah, but you think about it. You know, he does a full, all the information about the system. I don't know. I don't know what iExact exports. Yeah, iExact. So the check. So it doesn't export a lot of things. Yeah, it's all the same thing. There's, you know, the normal numbers, the mail, all the basic notes. But it's going to come a day where you're going to have to do it. I know, but I don't like to. I know. I know, I know. <laughs> don't wait you till you. Hire a, but you know you what? Don't wait temporary. till you have 2,500. <laughs> yeah, you could hire a temporary virtual assistant to get it yeah. all over there for you. If you can get your contacts over, just get them to copy all the notes for each one of them. I don't know if Scott Leroy could help you there. Maybe. You could ask. Is there a Uh, not really. Is there anything they can do to help? Not really, the because I, I know exactly the where I would need to go to get all of that information. But even if I get it, the format that I will need to provide it to Keller Williams is probably going to be totally different right. from what I'm getting in it. So they're not going to take the time to work on that. They're going to say, we're going to wait, wait a couple months, a month or two, when or when the Agent neighborhood creation feature is going to be there. They're going to be able to go in, draw it on the map, give it a name. That's it. It's done. The same way when I, as a consumer, I can go on the map and draw. And regardless if it's in the neighborhood that is in command or not, all the listings within that drawn um, area will show up. I I get it. I get it. I get it. It's like missing a piece of Toronto. It won't be okay. So so three years three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I was in St. Louis, Missouri. And you know that our, our David Brasso, our original director, he's from Laval, but he was uh, uh, he was a hockey national hockey league player, then became an agent, joined Keller Williams, moved to St. Louis, became a TL became an OP, and now owns two market centers and has about 800 agents. And while I was there, I said, David, do you mind if I come to your market center, meet your tw top 20%, and I'm going to do a command class? <laughs> Please, because they don't have someone like me doing that in the States. Okay? I went there, and I started my presentation like this. Guys, I'm excited today because today I'm not going to have to say, it doesn't work here. Guess what? I had the Didn't same box, <laughs> identical. <laughs> Neighborhoods are missing. Some listings are missing. They are facing MLS issues the same way as we do here. They're facing next door issues the same way we're. They just need, it, it just need bugs. Yeah, over time it's going to get better. I'm telling you, besides the direct mailing piece, we are 100% at par with the U.S. We have never been at par like this technology-wise as we are today, ever. So that's good. All right. What was my key objective this morning? Adoption. Are you guys, raise your hand, those who are going to start to use some part of command somehow. All right. <laughs> that is such reluctance in that hand. No, you know what? I'm really happy to see that because then I still have a job. <laughs> I'm joking. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to be here today. All right. Thanks. And the remote people, thank you so much as well. All right.
All right, so enjoy. Okay, so I, I am getting told that Scott Leroy did import uh, Google Contacts and the notes went along as well with tags. But so, doing Google Contacts, you don't but need. That was different. Yeah. You don't need Scott for Google but Contacts. He, All you, you have might, to do is Spicing. You might ask him about your program. He might have done it already with someone else. You want to talk to me? Yes, darling. Do you remember you mentioned about the guides and stuff like step guides? Yes. Do you think maybe that was already sent to us? Yesterday? From the market center. Yesterday? Yeah, I don't know when. It would have to be yesterday. Because I sent it out yesterday.